Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 142, and Merry Christmas to those who celebrate it. This episode is with my friend Josh Slaby. Now, I met Josh about 12 years ago, but I never really got to know him, and every time that we've hung out, it's always been within the context of martial arts. Uh, we trained together years ago in Shorinru, and I recently started training with him again a few months ago in Iaido. Josh is awesome, and one of the most dedicated martial artists I've ever met, for sure. Uh, He's a great example of someone who takes martial arts to a level where it becomes more of a lifestyle, and it was so fascinating to actually get to talk to him. Uh, We talked about our old days training together, how other students had a different idea of sparring, how Josh first got into martial arts, uh, being homeless for a while in Miami, making his way all the way to Japan to train, how he feels about technology and furthering the martial arts, sharing different styles, and so much more. So uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it. Uh, Please enjoy... The Interesting Podcast, episode number 142, with Josh Slaby. Theme song time! edit them once and then i never listen to them again yeah well you you, you saw my instagram i have the the reviews yeah, yeah. oh i love them love yeah. them okay well i hate them because yeah. it's me talking i'm like oh man look at this fucking guy he just sounds like a piece of shit what does he think he's doing with these swords well for, for me it's um you know obviously the science behind it, your drums you hear yourself at a lower lower pitch sure so you're like i sound good and then you hear yourself and you're like Who's this oh, yeah. nasally <laughs> dickhead trying to sound cool on this microphone? Oh, dude, so many times I'm like, I don't, I don't sound like that, do I? I sound like a child. Yeah, it's, yeah, no, I, I, um, it's awful. <laughs> I was, uh, I was, my, my wife saw the review. She's like, oh, it's cool, you finally did it. I'm like, yeah, I'm listening to it. Why did you marry me? <laughs> I would divorce myself if I had to listen to that every day, like. Yeah, I ask my wife the same thing every day. Yeah, like, I, well, I mean, I ask my wife that for multiple reasons. Yeah. Like, that's just the most recent uh, of many. I mean, yeah. she's she's a bodhisattva incarnate. Like, I yeah. I don't know how I got that lucky, but yeah. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. She did not know the level of obsession of Star Wars beforehand. Um, like she knew, but then I was like, just wait, just wait. I I will say, um, I I kind of set the tone right away when we started yeah dating. i'm like okay hey, so uh you you like me for who i am right like this isn't <laughs> yeah. like it's obviously not my money sure it's obviously not my looks <laughs> so i'm guessing it's me as a person she goes yeah no no you're you're a great guy i'm like okay so cool. you know i do martial arts yep. she's like yeah i'm like that is who i am you can't Smart. get one or the other sure i was like it's a big part of my life. Sure. I won't put it before you, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to be home a lot because I do martial arts. Right. It's a lifestyle. And yeah, exactly. And I was like, so, you know, if, if, if we're going to do this, which I'm all in, like sure. it's, it's either I'm all in or I just live in the woods until I die of like an impacted tooth in 10 years. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so, but don't, it's a toss up. This isn't a pity thing. This is, <laughs> you know, make, make a, make an informed choice. That's right. And, and she's like, yeah, no, that's cool. She's like, you know, it did, we just have to be able to compromise. I'm like, you said the C word. Right, yeah. Hold this on is, a second. This is good. <laughs> this is good because, you know, I mean, and, and she's she's been great because, you know, for a while I was uh, I was going to a karate class twice a week. I was sure. going uh, to sword class on Thursdays. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, when COVID started, karate was canceled. Class was canceled for a little bit. So she got me home a whole lot. And I think she was kind of like, when is this asshole going to <laughs> And so remember yeah. you said that you'd be you wouldn't be home a lot. <laughs> what I thought we agreed on that. Going on <laughs> right? here. You know. That's why we put the rings on. I thought that was part of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the deal. That was the deal. But um, yeah, so she's she's good. That's funny. How long have you been married? Recently, right? Uh, October fifth of last year. Hell yeah. I'm gonna keep mentioning that so I don't forget. It's on record now. Yeah. If and you're we like we started I... dating on November twenty eighth. 2016 there you go 2016 yes because i went to japan in 2017 we've never spent well no no we have now two out of the four years we've been together we've only spent two halloweens together really okay yes okay um 
for for a lot of reasons. One time I was in Japan, so sure that took a lot of convincing. Halloween is our jam. Oh hell yeah! And and so I was like, hey, uh, the cheapest time for me to go to Japan just so happens to be I will be gone for Halloween. <laughs> Just so you That's know. what's happening. Right. Yeah, She's man. Like, okay. I'm like, I don't think it's okay. Right. <laughs> but you said. I feel like there's something and, else. And, well, and that's, that's the other <laughs> the other agreement we came to is we're, sure. we all, we just, the both of us decided we say what we mean. We smart. mean what we say. So smart. And, and you know, like, it, 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 like, hearing myself say it, it sounds like one of those, like, dickish, like, I'm the man of the I'm like, if I ask you if you're if there's something wrong and you say no, I'm going to proceed on the idea that there's nothing wrong. I'm the same way. And I'm the same way. And I'm not trying to be callous. It's just like, and you don't have to answer me right away. If you sure. need a minute to, like, it's fine. Sure. I want to know, because if, or if I say, are you mad at me? And you say no. Okay. Cool. I will proceed. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is reality. And, yeah. And it's, it's not because I'm not invested in you know writing any wrongs i might do it has everything to do with i'm not a psychic i'm not a mind reader i just need you to understand that and likewise i will not expect the same nonsense out of you sure and and she's been she's been great with that because she understands like oh yeah like it's not fair for me to just i'm like because i I don't know like how many times like how many times have you pissed someone off and not realize you've done it (sighs) dude we don't have enough time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm with you. I, I had the same conversation. What's So I work nights, right? Okay. And so Monique always gets up before me. Mm. So we early on, I was like, listen, we're never going to sleep angry because you're going to wake up before me and I'm going to be asleep. Yeah. And I'll be defenseless. I was like, gotta... so we're, we're this, what we're figuring this out. We need to be. And also I'm dumb. I'm not going to pick up on the cues that you're mad at me. Yep. Let's just figure this out. <laughs> oh, I, I'm constantly telling my wife I'm an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I, same. I, just, just so she never thinks that I've like got a higher <laughs> opinion of myself than like a, the right. week before. Just like, in case. No, I'm just stupid. I'm just <laughs> stupid. And same. that's the truth. Yeah. It's I'm just a stupid guy. Things you learn. Things you learn. I, yeah. We it's... there was a there was a thing on TikTok recently where it was like a trend and it was like if all the women disappeared for twenty four hours, what would you do? And I was like, I would wait for her to get back. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Yeah. I was like, I'm useless. So no, no. I will sit here and I'll be like, all right, twenty four hours. That's all I need. I can wait twenty four hours. Yeah. I I would uh, <laughs> I would stay home. Yep. Yep. And I would just work on projects. There you go. Past time. And I'd have a timer set for 23 <laughs> <Yeah>. hours. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Two hours cleanup time. Smart man. Smart man. See, you're kind of smart. Well, it's... <laughs> I it's, said kind of. <laughs> it's, um, it's, not, it's not smart. Sure. It's, it's like base animal learning. Right. It's you know, survival. Like, like, a, like a dog with a <laughs> yeah. shock collar. They, they realize after they get zapped enough, like sure where, where the lines are, you know, That's but no, right. no, she, she's, <laughs> she's fine. Like she's actually way more tolerant than she should be of all of my weirdness. Probably best. Probably best. That's what we need. We need women that can deal with us. You know, I get it. Well, and she, like, it's crazy too. Cause like she'll, she'll, um, she'll have like a rough day or whatever, you know? Sure. And, and she'll be like a couple hours later, we both settled down. We're just watching TV and she'll be like, Hey, I'm sorry. I was being so crazy this morning. I'm like, oh, were you? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, yeah. I thought I was like, no, no. You, 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 no, haven't, you're good. You're good. you haven't done anything crazy. You're just a person who's expressing, right, being a human. Yep. And yep. what it's like to be annoyed by something like all people do. You haven't done anything crazy. Mm-hmm. She's like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. Well, I'm like, no, no. Like, you don't understand. <laughs> I've seen crazy. That's right. That dude. I'm the same way. I, my my family can be pretty intense. So when she's like, "Oh, I have these problems," I was like, "No, no, no. This is breakfast." My friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, listen, we haven't we haven't scratched the surface of. That's right. Yet. We're, my, we're not even on my meter yet. Yeah, You're gonna is, have to try a lot I, harder. I, 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 no, like I'm literally like I think my wife is still like on the honeymoon phase. Like you know that like the six month best behavior. I'm like, it's sure. been four years. When are you? When's the other shoe gonna drop? You know, That's like. Right. <laughs> Are we doing this right now? Is oh yeah, this, this oh, is it, man. Oh, okay. this is how it goes. I'm actually really excited. I can't remember the last time I did one of these in person. Oh, it's been so long. When I originally started the show, it was all in person. It was at like I would go to comic cons, oh. and I like had a, a a reputation at the time because of a costume that I'd done. People like knew who I was, and I didn't know how to handle that. So I was like, I'm just gonna bring my equipment, and then if I could get someone to talk to me, that's what mm-hmm. I'll do. And since then, almost. I would say almost all of them have been either Zoom or Skype or whatever, because I'm usually talking to people from around the world. Yeah, you know, so it's it's kind of nice. 
ah, to be like yeah, no, seeing cool. a person in person, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, this is a completely novel experience for me, so. Yeah, that's go. right. It, have you thought about like how long we've known each other? Because oh. I was thinking about it the other day, and it's it's a long time. So I'm the type of person where I will have like, um, you know, in, in, in like the back of my brain, the intellectual knowledge of like, oh, I've known this guy forever. Yeah. And then something will happen. Where it'll like hit me like, oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> like, um, like for example, I the other day I, I I was talking to someone, and I was like, oh yeah, like twenty years ago, and then I stopped. I'm like, sheesh. When did I become the person that had things that yeah. happened to them twenty years ago? How's that allowed? Yeah, it, it's, it seems illegal. And like you think about it, like okay, I'm 31, so 20 years I was 11. Okay, whatever, sure. not a big deal. But like formative things happen to you at that age. Things yeah. that you remember. It's like yeah. you're, you're meeting people. You're becoming who you're going to be. Yeah. Hopefully, you grow a lot more from 11. Yeah. <laughs> Ideally. I mean, I can't speak for everyone. <laughs> True. But, True. You know, uh, and and so I'm just thinking about it. I'm like, ah, man, like. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm getting old. Yeah. Yeah. I was 17. Yep. When I first went there, I'm 29 now. Yeah. So okay. So it's yeah. like 12 years. Yeah. So yeah, that's there's two different two insane. years difference. Yeah. It's it's been a while. Insane. Yeah. I mean, that's that's it's a long time. It is. It really is. Um. I mean, and and, and really, the whole world's different. Yeah. You, you think about like what 12 years is. It's oh yeah. Two words. Yeah. You know, but you think about like, okay, I I I'd gotten my first cell phone around that time. It was a flip phone. Yeah, uh, it had like the, uh, um, like an old like digital radio. Oh yeah, thing. So it looked the it looked antenna. Like a radio. <laughs> well, not yeah. Well, it had, it had mine. Mine wasn't. Um, it was just a nub. Oh yeah, the little. I didn't have to have the stump. extender one. Yeah, yeah, I had I had the stump, <laughs> but it had like the the display. You know, the digital display. Sure. But instead of having red letters like my alarm clock, I had blue, Ooh. and everyone's like, "Ooh, you got a cool phone." Look at that. It looked, it looked like um. <laughs> It looked like the cell phones used in Final Fantasy Advent Children. Oh, boom. And so I, I remember um, this was before you well, – it wasn't before. You had to pay exorbitant amounts of money to buy ringtones. Right. And like I we remember just talking this. about we were really poor. Yeah. So I went to Austin's house. Oh, did you? Got on his computer <laughs> that had better internet than my house. Smart. And I went on, I went on uh, YouTube and I searched for Final Fantasy – um, my dude fanfare yeah yeah and i had an audio recorder yep. on my phone <laughs> and so i recorded it and yep. i made that my ringtone so it's this like Beautiful. super grainy thing and these things had ungodly volume back then yeah. so i mean it would like wake the dead with how loud it would be sure. <laughs> You know, like, and you have that point of pride where you're like, I recorded that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all me. Well, because everyone else is like, where did you get that ringtone? I'm like, oh. That's right. Internet. I did it, <laughs> I did it myself. That's but, right. Dude, I've done that so many times. Oh, well, what so were you going to do back then? There, it, I did. Kid you not, my ringtone now, I did that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Old habits die hard, I guess. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean. <laughs> it's, it's nuts to think about because ever since I asked you to come on the show, which I – it, everyone that I've asked to come on the show, I'll be fully transparent. I think about it for a long time beforehand mm. because, you know, uh, you have to hang out with me for a while. And, like, I don't know. I need to make sure we have something that vibes, like, yeah. whatever it is, it's unspoken, but it's there. Mm -hmm. And then that's where conversation sparks. And it gave me a lot of time to think about, like, yeah, we met when we were so young. Like, do you remember Morp? Do you remember that? It was when it was, like, the Bashams, me, you, and a few other people, instead of going to prom, we did our own thing. At the Basham house? Yes. So I was there. So the thing is, you've always been the martial artist in my life. And, oh. I, and I've, and because I'm like, <laughs> and, but I, I love it because my thing is like, especially in Naples, there's the McDojos, right? You know, it's all about like pay $300 a month and then you're part of the family. And I was like, I'm not interested in that whatsoever. I want to learn the art. I want people that take it seriously. And this is what I've been looking for for so long. Mm. Never found anything until Kevin. Yeah. You know, and I was like, yeah, this is literally what I've waited my whole life for. You know, I studied it. I read books about it, all these things, but I never had like actual practical things until mm -hmm. then. And so I remember looking up to like Steven and like you and people that like, oh, right. That's, that's the, what I want to do. Right? Yeah. So I remember, and I think I've told this story on the podcast before. I remember on Morp, uh, that's what we called it. Yeah, yeah. Prom backwards. And I remember it was those days when, like, we would just spar all the time. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, young guys, I were like, you want to fight? Let's just do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember 
uh, you were like, hey, do you want to do this? And nobody else said yes, but I was like, I do for sure. I want to learn these things. And I remember you, I still don't know what you did, but it was some move where we like, there were a few strikes landed, but then you like grappled me and twisted me up somehow. I tapped and I was like, I don't know what you did. We got to do it again. And you're like, really? And I was like, I'm so, I, I have to learn from this. So we did it again. You did the same thing. And I was like, okay, that hurt. I still don't know what you did. So we did it again. So you beat me three times by tab out. And then I walked away. I was like, okay, I can't walk straight anymore. But thank you for that. That was cool. I remember this. <laughs> you know? So, because I've told this story a few times. Have you? And I knew it was, <laughs> it was you or your brother. I just didn't remember sure. which at the time. Sure. Because like you guys were just, you came yeah. in a pair. Yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah. And I was telling someone the story. So the first one I got you in was, it was a forward choke where uh, I had one leg. This is going to sound, if you. If you haven't experienced it, it's going to sound very, um, you know, we'll just call it as homoerotic. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm on top of you and I've got my knee wrapped around one of your legs, pushing into your solar plexus. And I yep. got an arm behind your neck and an arm on top of your neck. You clamp down. Sounds about right. And that was what happened. Yeah. And <laughs> so this is burnt into my mind because that's that so happened funny. Twice. And then it was the third, the third time you didn't fall the way I wanted you to. You fell face down. That sounds about right. And I got you in basically a leg pool. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, I can't be this mean because the actual <laughs> move is I basically sit on the small of your back and pull from the knees towards me. Sure. Up, and sure. it forces all the air out of your lungs and it's very painful and it okay. feels like your head's going to explode. Sure. Sure. Classic. <laughs> and I remember I was like, I'm not going to be that mean. But what I did was also mean. I stood <laughs> up and just ripped you through my legs and through you. That sounds about right. That sounds and about I was right. Like, I was thinking about that. I'm like, why did people like me? Yeah. <laughs> like, I did these mean things to people. That's and, so funny. But I, I will say, because I was actually thinking about this the other day. I was like, yeah, you know, because we were I yeah. was thinking about like, oh, I've known him for a while. He did, did training with me at Kevin's house and everything. I'm like, and, and I'm not like, this, this is going to sound like I'm one of those like weird, like back in my day. Sure. But, um, sure. Like I at least got consent from people who wanted true. or not wanted to fight. That's true. That's true. Because it was it was it was before you you joined up. But like, uh, do you remember Matt? Yes. Okay. So yeah. Matt and I were, were buddies. We always hung out, go everywhere together. And, mm -hmm. um, Steve, you remember Steve? Obviously, yep. you remember Chris. Tattoo. Yep. 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 Chris uh, bald. Yep. Do you yep. remember? He's not bald anymore. He's got a lot of hair. Oh, good for um, him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and do you remember Glenn at all? I do. Okay. Because I got paired up with Glenn my first class for the Iron Body, and I limped for a week and a half. It was my first day, and I was like, all right. And I remember being like, oh, Iron Body, cool, because, you know, you did yeah. it for years. And it friggin' hurts. Yes. And Glenn was, like, not pulling anything. And yeah. I was like, dude, <laughs> limped yeah. for a week. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, look. <laughs> so let me let me finish my first. Yeah. So, um, and what I mean by I would get consent is sure. I would go, hey. You do martial arts with me. Do you want to spar? And you go, sure. Yep. And then we'd fight and, you know, we'd get beat up and stuff. Yep, yep. Um, Steve especially. Yeah. And Glenn as well didn't do that. Ah, they just defend yourself. Well, <laughs> not even that. So, like, the one time Matt and I showed up to a, a bonfire at the Campbell's house, actually. Sure. And we knew they were there. Mm -hmm. Because they said, oh, we'll be there. And we saw Steve's car. I'm like, okay, Steve's there. Oh, boy. We didn't know where they were. <laughs> and we didn't know where they were for, like, an hour. Oh, okay. And Matt and I were like, we're, we're about to get jumped. We don't know oh, when, no. but we're going to get jumped. <laughs> you just feel that, like, ninjas in the trees feeling? <laughs> like, well, here's the thing, because Steve would basically act like an anime character, but, like, a scary, terrifying one. Yeah. And, but, so... Yeah. I'm talking to some people and I hear Matt give this like yell and I look over just in time to see Steve coming out of like this dark pocket of oh, forest no. and attack Matt. Oh, no. And I go, Oh shit. And I turn around and Glenn is coming out from underneath like a flatbed trailer that was there Good God. at me like full speed. <laughs> and so that's how I would get sparred. Sure. Essentially is like, I would just, they, they, they literally sat there until it looked like we had dropped our guard enough where they could <laughs> catch us. And then you're basically in this weird fight. Where, like, And I'm happy. 
sure. that that stuff happened because I've learned to manage those oh shit moments a lot better than I ever could have had I not had someone who was bigger and stronger than me just like straight up attack me and not pull punches. Sure, sure. That's how you learn. But also, <laughs> I don't agree with that as a training tool. Yeah, that's fair. If it's not, that's fair. Like again, what we were talking about earlier about like you know, well, some people you know you want too much safety, not enough you know risk in their training. Some people want all risk, no safety, and that was how it it seemed with some of the people we trained with. Yeah. Now I will say this <laughs> in Kevin's defense, he discouraged those things. He did, but. He also kind of would like look on with pride because like yeah it's like, one of those things you've been fighting yeah you're doing real you've been good winning. <laughs> yeah yeah but um yeah. <laughs> it, it's just, it's just so funny because like it's it's really weird because like it, and like a lot of the stuff might get me like completely like uh, blacklisted by a lot of like mainstream martial <laughs> artists and stuff because like there, there's a lot of there's a lot of different opinions about like what the role of martial arts is like does it teach Absolutely. you self-defense is sure. it a sport is it this is it that you know and, and everyone has their own opinions and i think absolutely that based on context they're all equally relevant i think so you know so like you mentioned mcdojo's and mcdojo's isn't going to teach you good self-defense right you have to go to a place that has been broken down and analyzed and the instructor has got some sort of idea of what self-defense is or is not sure and you train for those types of situations sure if you're going to a place where it's like you know trophies are us like look at all these right uh, trophies in our window and we go to competitions and we do competition sparring and that's how i'm going to teach you to spar you can't expect to hold your own against anyone who's competent if that's what you do, if you're point based sparring, because uh, it, it's tag, it's tag, and for sure. what it is, it's fine. If, but as long as you know, right, that that's what you're doing, and and so when people say, oh, you know, doing karate doesn't teach you how to defend yourself, doing karate won't teach you how to fight properly and stuff. I'm like, the hell are you talking about? <laughs> what kind of karate but, are you doing? <laughs> but, well, right, but then yeah. you know, I realized that how how Kevin was teaching us and how some of the more senior students were interacting. Yeah. They would like a lot of those things would have actually gotten them thrown out of a lot of dojos. Oh, for sure. Like completely blacklisted. You're not allowed back here. Don't ever show your face here again. Sure. We might actually have already called the cops. Right. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And <laughs> sure. And, and, and Kevin, Kevin was actually, he was a really good teacher. Yeah. But it, it was weird. Cause I'd go to other schools to visit or whatever. And I'd be like, Oh, so what do you guys do for your workout? And like, oh, we did 20 push ups. I'm like, just 20. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Like, well, how much weight did you have on? I'm like, wait. I'm like, yeah. You right. know? And, and there was a <laughs> sure. weird disconnect because Kevin, you know, pushed us really hard to become physically oh, yeah. strong. And he, you know, he, he would he would do stuff in a, in a traditional way where it's like, okay, you're going to learn the technique. You're going to learn the application of the technique. Mm -hmm. You're going to go through. You're going to practice it. You're going to practice it. You're going to practice it. But then there was always the, the strike with intent. There was, yeah. you have to proficiently do this technique. For me to teach you anything else totally and so you know growing up in that type of of uh training it it helped me to learn how to analyze a lot of things better but it also led to this kind of weird disconnect with a lot of other people sure. where they weren't doing what i did and because that was like my first experience in any sort of like serious training mm -hmm. i thought that's just what you did right and so I would kind of come off as this like condescending dickhead to a lot of people <laughs> and not have any clue why they were like, fuck you. Right. You know, sure. But, like I inspired a couple of people who like were black belts or, you know, multiple rank black belts mm -hmm. and like they would kick me and fall on the ground. Sure. Because I would do a shin block. Right. Well, they've never experienced a shin block. And it friggin' like hurts. That. <laughs> and they've never experienced someone who does body conditioning locking their foot with their shin yeah and sparring with kevin and his students Sheesh. <laughs> you could it was deep receive in a stuff. kick onto your shin yeah and that's a fair thing mm -hmm. and in other styles like oh well you could break someone's foot i'm like well make your shins harder yeah you that, know, like, that's the whole like, mentality and, of iron body yeah and and again like how some of the guys did it they they took it a little too far too fast yeah <laughs> like so i still do body conditioning oh cool i've chilled out Sure. <laughs> I've chilled out on how I do it. Mm -hmm. There's there's no rush. Probably best. And, you know, there were times where, like, 
they wanted to toughen you up, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Totally. That's, that's great. Yes. Mm-hmm. But like you said, not pulling, not holding back. Right. You absolutely need to. You can't just grab some person who's a complete noob at this and go, I'm going to punch you as hard as I can. And that's going to make you tough. No, it's going to make you puke. Exactly. And, uh, so, exactly. So I've, I've grown a lot and, and Kevin, Kevin's training has, has changed quite a bit. And part of it is like, we're both older or whatever, but he's sure. also, he's also done a lot more research into these things. And, and, you know, so he's like amended it and he's a little bit like tougher on people. Oh, okay. Like as okay. far as like how they're doing things. Sure. So there, there's a lot more, um, to like focus on technique kind of thing like this well, has to be right he he got he got really frustrated a lot of times where people would focus on root force more than technique sure know, in the past like sure we, we talked about this a few times but like so like like body conditioning we're still body conditioned when i've seen him i've seen him a couple of times since he moved and we train together and stuff and we do that and stuff but he he's very adamant on like slow and steady smart build and, the foundation and, and making the people that train with us slow and steady so he doesn't tolerate the I'm going to kick you as hard as I can oh, type stuff. Good for him. And he, when he would catch it, he would also be like, no, don't. But right. If you do it again, when, when I'll do it too. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and when you meet up to train with people like outside of class and stuff, like, and that's where a lot of that stuff would happen. It's like, hey, y'all come over to my house and train in the woods. And like, yeah, sure. And then you're like, oh, fucking can't walk. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, and, and again, so it's like, it's one of those things where like, I'm not unhappy that it happened. Yeah. Because like I've gotten a lot tougher. Sure. I can mentally handle things a lot better than I could have had it not. Right. But I also won't subject people who I train with to that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's 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 kind of the journey. All of life actually. It's 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 so nuanced. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it's 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 so nuanced. You can't just say this is it, that's not or whatever. But um Yeah. Yeah, no. Martial arts is cool. I'm glad I do them. Yeah. Yeah, and, totally. I'm I'm glad that I've had the experience I've had, um, all of them, whether they're good or bad. Yeah. Because it's 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 like you said earlier, it's it is a lifestyle and it shapes the way you think. Hundred percent, a hundred percent. And and if you do it right, and you're and you continue to do it right. Now I'm not I'm not an expert. I'm I'm really not, and I'm not like some phenom great dude. I'm just a guy that does things. You know. Yeah, sure. But are we all? <laughs> you you learn to incorporate what you're doing mm-hmm. into what you're doing. So oh, what, yeah. what I mean by that is like, um, you know, if, if you, if you could like shadow me on a day at the job, you would see that like a lot of the stuff that we do in class mm-hmm. I'm doing at work. Sure. Just not with a sword. Right. So like, for example, I had this one person was looking at me like I had six heads cause I was sitting in, uh, sitting in Tatahiza cutting baseboard and mm-hmm. she's like, why are you sitting like that? I'm like, Oh, it's comfortable. She's like, that looks really uncomfortable. No, it's like the most comfortable way to sit. And she's like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah. And I can move a lot easier. And and like, what? And like, so I've incorporated the same body movements from my sword training into my work life, into my home life and everything. And and really what it is, is like, well, I will get better. Like I'm always training. Right. I'm not swinging a sword 24 hours a day, but I'm always training something. Right. Um, You know, I, I consciously you know, try to take stock of like, how am I standing? Is my posture good? Am I like, am I, am I moving with my center? Am I moving properly? Am I breathing properly? And, um, it, it's one of those things that you don't have to be in a dojo to polish things. Sure. Are just everyday things, you know? Totally. Um, I don't like change how I hold things. Okay. So when I hold a paintbrush, I'm doing the same type of grip as a, a, holding a sword. Oh, okay. a roller pole. I'm holding it like it's a sword when I'm, you know, everything. Um, that's how I do it. Right. Unless I'm doing something that specifically needs a different grip. Like, uh, you know, I, I did, uh, I went to a, uh, Kudo Japanese archery seminar a couple, oh, a couple years back. And, um, I was like, I'm going to hold the bow. Like I hold the sword and they're like, you have to hold it a little bit differently, similar, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but differently. I'm like, fair enough. Show me. Right. Again. Okay. And, um, so if I'm holding anything that is similar to a bow, I hold it like that. Right. That makes sense. Cause there's, because there's like that's... stories of samurai that like, you know, when they weren't doing it, like calligraphy, mm-hmm. it translates to sword play, painting of sword play. Like a lot of it are it, a martial art. There's that artistry to it yeah. where it is that commitment sort of thing. Like I find that fascinating. That's why I've been obsessed with samurai my whole life. Cause just the idea of commitment, I guess. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and one of the, one of the things about it is it's kind of like, um, a lot of people tend to 
to overestimate. Yeah. I can what, say that. What doing a martial art can do for you. And what I mean by that is like, uh, so the, I, I've seen it a lot of times. Oh, ah, you know, my, my kids misbehave and I'm going to send them to karate. I don't teach them discipline and oh, respect. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> no, it won't. No. It's, it's unfortunately like training someone. It's, it's different, obviously, but it's very similar. Like when you're training a dog. Yeah. There has to be consistency. Totally. So you can't throw your kid into a dojo where now they just have to listen. Yeah. Like they don't have a choice because if they don't listen, they're going to be thrown out. Yeah. And then when they get home, there's no discipline. There's no structure. Mm-hmm. It's it's not a respectful environment, you know. Yeah. And you, you can't expect that, you know, one hour a week at, you know, so-and-so's dojo is going to make your kid into like this like – <laughs> star human being right you have to accept that a lot of the responsibility on making sure your kids don't suck is on you yeah where you are they know? spending more time it just makes sense yeah yeah you know and do i think it's do i think it's good for people that i think everyone should do martial arts i think so i i think i everyone, think so I, well first of all i think everyone should just have like some sort of base knowledge on how to fight yeah it's good for I, you i agree um I, I agree. also think that people should do it because it teaches you how to use your body correctly yeah. Provided you're t- learning from someone who teaches correctly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's the catch-22. Yeah. You have to find a good instructor, but you won't know a good instructor until you've trained with a good instructor. But if your first right. instructor sucks, then you don't know. Right. Well, that's why I've been so glad to have you, really. Because, like, I, I don't remember how I found Kevin. It might have been through Eugene, actually. Uh, It was either Eugene or I think it's Eugene. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it was Eugene because he was, like, way into it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to check this thing out. And then yeah. what, the first day of class was like, oh, this is what I've been looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then with – so, like, when did you start doing martial arts then? 16. 16? Yeah. Wow, not bad. So, wait, no. Half of my life. Hey, uh, there, look at that. Hit that mark. There you go. And I'm actually upset about that. Really? I How wish come? I started younger. I oh, wish, like, always. For, for like, it wouldn't have worked out obviously if I was younger going to like the the, the dojo in Fort Myers because mm-hmm. my parents wouldn't have driven me up there for that. Like, right. You know, sure. and stuff like that. But I wish I would have. I wish I would have started earlier um, in that because I'd be better. That's that's the only thing. Yeah, of course. And it's not like better. Like cool, I can do flashy, cool stuff. I would have a deeper understanding of what I'm doing. Right. At, like, cause I'm I'm still learning stuff about the first thing I learned on the first day. Yeah. And it never totally. it never stops, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. And and so it's like, oh man, like, waited so long. It right. Sucks. But like, I mean, I've been I've been attending the dojo full time since I was 23. Wow. Wait, is it 23? Couldn't be 24. Maybe. I got back to Naples from school in 2012. I mean, whatever. The one you're at now. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. No, I've been there. I didn't know that. I know I was like the new guy, but I didn't realize. I, and I think the next newest person has been doing it for like three years. Like the minimum was three, I think. And then it goes up from there. Because Sensei's been doing it for like 20. Yeah, he's been there forever. Yeah, and then obviously. Dan, I think, was next for like 15 or something. Yeah. Well, Dave, I think Dave has been there. Uh, Sensei Dave has been there technically longer than Sensei Dan has, but he had a he had a time where he was living in Chicago, obviously. So like, oh. but you know, I mean, he was still a member and everything, and just wow. lived out of state. Uh, it's it's weird. Timelines get confused. Like for example, I actually started mm. going to the dojo in two thousand nine. Wow. I went for like a month or two, right before I went to FIU. Really? Yeah. How'd you find him? Uh, Dan. Really? Yeah. Dan. Dan knew Kevin. Oh right, right, and, right, right. And, and so Dan would come and train with me. Um, cause he, he did karate too with, right. with Kevin and everything, but he was more focused obviously on the swords. And I started training with Kevin because I wanted to learn how to use a sword. Uh, I didn't want to do karate. First. Sure. Sure. I wanted to do swords. That's like, that, like, and that's kind of why I'm like upset that, um, it took me so long to like get there consistently right. because f- from a very early age, I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Like it, it, it's one of those things where, you know, and it started like every kid, like, you know, you, you see like a movie with swords and you're like, Oh yeah. Holy shit. Oh yeah. You know? And then the first time I saw, uh, I saw it was like this old, it was like maybe like a seven inch tall by four inch long, like paperback book on Eido. Oh, okay. I saw it in the library and I remember like getting goosebumps and chills because I'm like, people still do this. Like I freaked me out. Like I was excited and I like ran at my mom. Like I got to do this. And she's like, I don't know about that. Right. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I'm like, "Uh, no, like this is the thing I have to do. And I'm going to do it. Like it doesn't matter. And she's like, well, 
you're a kid. I'm like, uh, th- there's a kid in the book. Right. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> clearly, you know, and, and so it, it took me a while, but yeah. So Dan, Dan's the one that actually introduced me to sensei and, um, went up there in like 2009. I only learned the first kata and yeah. then I ended up going to school. Oh. And so I, you know, brought my stuff to school and I would just train the first kata in my dorm room mm-hmm. all the time. You know, I had to sneak my, my, my gear past my RA because, course <laughs> so I, I would just sit in my dorm room and you know do the first kata over and over again sure and um but when i came back in 2012 i showed back up to the dojo and i i, I like it's like told you i'd be back and everyone's like who the fuck are you i'm like <laughs> i was that guy <laughs> right you know? and um, number one remember first kata i'm the and, guy and, and they're like yeah that's happened a lot here I'm like oh, oh I but bet. dan's like well no this guy's cool he's my buddy like, okay sure so, uh, but i started over i just i just pretended i didn't know anything it's the way started, to go started over because like you know three years i hadn't i hadn't been there you yeah know? and oh, yeah. um but yeah so that's well not 2012 it was 2013 because i came back at the end of 2012 mm-hmm. and i was out of work for a few months and really really ill from all of my trials in Miami. Sure. Uh, which is, just, <laughs> but yeah, so it, it took me a while, but the first thing I did, I, I didn't realize I was getting a tax return that year. Oh, there you go. And I got, I, it was the biggest tax return I've ever gotten. It was, it was $1,200. Ooh. I've never gotten one. Like, I think my last, well, I'm not going to talk about my last tax return yet. Yeah. But, uh, the one before <laughs> that was like 38 cents. I'm like, oh yeah. Don't yeah. Know the government <laughs> Get this it. Time. Gumball son. But, but that first one, because I had, I'd been out of work. Sure. I, I couldn't find a job. I, I, I was trying to find a job. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I couldn't even get a job as like a uh, uh, busing tables. Oh no! Like it was I don't, for for some reason no one was hiring me. So I was out of work, and I got this check, and I put it in, put it in my bank account, and I, it was I don't remember. I think it was like a Wednesday hmm. that I got it into my bank account, and I was like, well, I don't have work tomorrow. So I grabbed my stuff and I started working out out in the yard. I took a shower, I filled up my car, and I drove to Fort Myers. And oh. that was like the first thing I did when I had money. Get it. I had I had enough money and I, I, I paid Sensei the monthly dues. He's like, oh, you don't have that. I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> you need to understand. Right. This is the only thing I can give you to show you I'm in. I'm, I'm right. I, I'm, I'm here. here. Yeah. Because all I have right now is money, but I don't have a lot of it. But I'm giving you some of this money to let you know I am completely invested in this. Hell and yeah. I'm going to buy whatever else I need. And then fortunately I got, I got the job I have now I'm painting houses and stuff. Sure. And it was more money than any other job I was applying for. Hell yeah. And I'm like, Oh boy, like this is, this is going to be good. Like yeah. I, can, I can do things. I can, I can get money and I can, I can save up and I can buy this really expensive, you know, training tool and I can buy a uniform that doesn't like have holes and it's not sun faded. And yeah. It's going to be really cool. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's I've, so cool. I've been, serious about martial arts for as long as i can remember and what's funny is my parents were actually against me doing martial arts when i was a kid really mm-hmm. were yeah, they, they afraid you're gonna a... just break all their tables in half no, no 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 they they actually thought that it would make me into a more violent person oh okay so when i was younger and i just had a bad temper of course and like i mean fair enough you know i think i think every person goes through a period where they have like a too short of a fuse. Sure. You know, but here's the thing. I also realized there was a problem like on my own. That's important. Like 13. I'm like, this is not how people should be. Right. <laughs> and and hmm. so I tried to work on it myself and everything. But um, yeah, they, they didn't want me to do martial arts because they thought I was just going to become like a super violent, like crazy right. person or <laughs> jail for like killing people. Right. And um, so for me to actually be able to train with Kevin, oh, he yeah. had to come meet my parents and talk to them and be like, yeah, well, I'll no way. kick your own son's ass. If right, yeah. Starts, like, and they're like, yeah, you better. And he's like, that's kind of a weird thing to say, but yeah, sure. Okay. Right. <laughs> that's but, what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, so, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, it's, it's weird how, like, life gets, sw- you know, switched up on you. It's like an uno reverse. Oh, yeah. Like, you're going one way and then boom, the other way. Oh, yeah. Know? Like, if you would have, if you would have told me while I was, like, at college that, oh, you know, uh. Like, I knew I would have been doing martial arts. Sure. I knew that. I was right. Like, I'm never going to stop. But if you would have told me I'd be painting houses back in Naples, I'd be like, no, that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like, thank, thank God that that's actually what happened because I wouldn't have the life I've had. Yeah. If, if not. You yeah. Know? And it's it's like, you know, I mean, you know, growing up, we both went through, like, a, a lot of just, like, rough shit. Yeah. You know? 100%. And I'm really happy all of those things happened. Same. You know? Um, but... 
be careful what you wish for. Yeah. So yeah. You, <laughs> I'm with you there. Because yeah. I learned that the hard way. Oh, yeah. Um, and it, so when I was, it was like 2008, I was working at uh, the guitar store off of uh, Golden Gate Parkway. Oh, yeah. You remember okay. Pix and Pix Mega Music? Uh-huh. Yeah. So I was working there. And so I, you know, parents would bring their kids in for guitar lessons and they just hang out. So I talked to all these, you know, all these parents and it was usually moms mm -hmm. and they always thought I was like an interesting case study. Cause it's like this weird kid <laughs> that has like a mohawk and still wears like short sleeve black and red flame button downs. Oh and yeah. Like, <laughs> likes martial arts, but plays bass in a band and screams at microphones. And so uh -huh. They always wanted to like, try to like talk to me and stuff. I've been to those concerts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and those happened. Yep, my hair's not blue anymore. Yeah. Don't wear yep. the makeup anymore, but yep. you know, it's um, there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's still inside. That's right. It's That's just right. a lot of work, and I'm tired and old and lazy. That's right. But um, <laughs> I remember I was telling this this one kid's mom. I, I, I'd, I'd basically seen her like every Saturday for like a year. You mm -hmm. know, you, you can't not see the same person that often without like developing some sort of like at least like um, – it's like a return customer, like a rapport, like yeah, yeah, you, yeah. yeah. It's like it's like, well, I'm stuck here until seven, and you're here for an hour, and I'm bored, so like, right. it's like eventually you're, the you're talking. I'm speaking to, yeah. yeah. And um, I remember like just telling this lady one time, I was like, yeah, I kind of want to be homeless for a little bit. I think it'd be good for me. Oh, I want to like live out of my car. And she was like, why would you want to do it? I'm like, well, I think if I could handle doing that for even a small period of time, uh, you know. I think I'll be all right. I can handle anything that comes my way. Oh, She's boy. like, that's like a really weird thing to say. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, probably. But like, I just got to live my life. You know, like, so, like every yeah. dipshit 18 year old says like, they have I've been like, there. Yeah. I've been there. Well, so it turns out like if I would have known that like a year and a half later, I would be <laughs> living out of my car in the summer in Miami. I would have never said those words. Yeah. Cause that sucks. Yeah. You oh know? yeah. Like, I mean, and I wasn't like, every night living out of my car it wasn't like that that drastic but sure. like, like i had places i could sleep sometimes i could mm -hmm. you know but like uh my i remember the one time i crashed at my buddy's place at his apartment complex uh, i was it was my friend takeshi mm -hmm. and um, so he was he was from japan he was studying at the same school as me and he right had on. this like decent apartment with an extra bedroom sure and you know i had developed pretty pretty close friendship with him and his family and everything i've met both of his parents and they're they're great people oh like, yeah um and the landlord oh, no. who owned the property there oh, no. did not like them. Ah. And he did not like them because they were Asian. Ah. One of those. <laughs> yes. Sheesh. So by extension. Of course. He did not like me yeah now i followed the rules i parked in guest parking i would have the okay. guest pass i you know i wouldn't sneak in or anything like that and um i was i hadn't like slept on a bed for a few days sure um and like so the funny thing about the united states is in a lot of places it's like illegal to be homeless and the cops will chase you out of places if you're like oh yeah trying to sleep in a parking lot for a few hours and stuff so like uh -huh. this was like day two of doing this and not being able to get a hold of my other friends to like just like sleep on their couch yeah yeah know? and you know, the night before, I was trying to get a hold of my friend um, who lived in the dorms at FIU. Mm -hmm. And I was in my car trying to get a hold of him, and a cop walked up to me because they had their own police department. Ah. He's like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm trying to call my friend. He's like, are you a student here? I'm like, well, that's what the sticker on my car says. He's like, he's looking at me. He's like, well, where do you live? I'm like, here? And he's like, he's like looking at all of like my earthly possessions in my car. And he's sure. Like, he's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get a hold of my friend, you know. Mm. But basically, like – was politely informed that I should not be in that parking spot. Sure. You know, yep. later on. Yep. You know? Yep. So like, it, it, it's like such a weird thing to say like that. Like I was not doing anything wrong, but I'm also like dodging the police. Sure. Because I just didn't have a home <laughs> at the time. You yeah. Know? I couldn't afford to live in the dorms, but mm -hmm. I was taking summer classes. Yeah. And my, my laptop was like, not good. Yeah. I, I got it for free. <laughs> And I'm grateful I had it. Sure. But it was like not good. And is updating the software would make it just be worse. Yeah. So I had to yeah. use like my library's computers and my job was there. So it wasn't like I could just like go back to Naples. Sure. And, and there, there was a lot of other reasons why I decided to like stick it out. It wasn't because I wanted to prove I could live in my car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't um, know till you know. You yeah, know? <laughs> well, here we go. So I, I got a hold of my friend and he's like, hey, you can come crash at my apartment, man. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, thank 
God, like, it's like, can I take a, a shower? And he's yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, all oh, right. I haven't had one of those in like two days. Sure. So I get there and we're hanging out and he like help him make dinner. We're hanging out. And, you know, it's, 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 just, it's great. Cause like they, uh, they had this like really cool, uh, computer program where they could like live stream Japanese television. Oh, what? So like we had cool. like, just awesome food and we're like watching Japanese game shows. I'm like, yeah. And get he's like, All right, man. Well, Hey, I'm like, I'll sleep on the couch. He's like, no man, the, the bedroom's made up. You can just go sleep in the bedroom after you take a shower. I'm like, yes. dude, this is like a dream come true for me. I wake up the next morning. My car is gone. Uh, um, I was going to say, this is going to turn south. Oh no. The landlord towed my Got car. Towed. <sighs> and so I go downstairs. I'm like, where's my car? Yeah. And this guy comes over and he starts yelling at me he doesn't speak english oh no and i don't speak spanish sure but i could make out one phrase and it was ba- he was like pointing at my friends and it was like the equivalent of calling them those dirty chinese those dirty chinese Jeez, my god and i'm like they're fucking japanese asshole <laughs> like it was, it was like getting me upset sure because like first of all rightfully my so friends and yeah second of all like yeah i don't I'm tolerate with tolerate that type of bull like absolutely isn't that funny how like life kind of does that to you where you're like oh, you know i want to try this thing out and then it goes here and it just snowballs and gets worse you're like want to live in my car and then they're like you can't live in your car here we're gonna take your car it's like yeah, yeah be careful what you wish for is right you took my damn home how <laughs> yeah. am i supposed to go to work i want to try to be homeless and then you're like i'm in a car that counts right and they're like no 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 yeah. now you're homeless <laughs> yeah now i'm super yeah. home like you gotta go find a bridge <laughs> Yeah, no, it's weird. Like, ah, oh, man, I, I, I could keep you up for days just telling you Miami stories. That's like, but that I love that though because there is that, and we kind of talked about it before that like there's that thing where people who've been through stuff that like, oh right, I see that in your eyes because I have the same thing, you yeah, know. You and got you, the scars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like you have that thing like you know what it's like to be hungry. <laughs> you yes. know? So then, as someone that like you like martial arts is a lifestyle, mm-hmm. right? Is there something that you've gotten from martial arts? having been alive for 30 years now that you didn't expect going into it because you wanted to do it your whole life, but it's so different in the application. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, I, I have a dream job, but once you do it, you're like, Oh, right. I didn't realize all this work. A dream job, still a job, you know? Yeah. So having wanting to be martial arts or a martial artist for so long and then doing it, how is it different than you expected? How is it different than I expected? Yeah. Um, I know I make you think, huh? Get you comfortable and then hit you with the ones. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not the problem. I'm, I'm... <laughs> the good different. Uh huh. Sure. Because I didn't expect how much it would benefit me in actually avoiding violence. Great point. So, you know, there's obviously the, the and this is the first part of like self defense, a situational awareness, right? Absolutely. Um, how you walk. Like, where do you walk? Like, mm-hmm. Walking down a hallway. How are you walking down this hallway? Can you see around corners before someone at the corner can see around? You know, how do you, how do you go up and down stairs? How, how do you approach mm-hmm. life? Yep. And it's, it's not like living in fear. It's, it's very much like you just understand we live in an imperfect world. Yep. And you need to start teaching yourself to navigate it in a way that leaves you with that like split second of the, oh, from, oh, shit, is identifying there's a problem. Sure. Okay. Um, the other benefit is it, it's actually made my reflexes a lot quicker. I have been able to avoid like knock on wood, lots of car yeah. accidents <laughs> yeah. because people in Naples are really getting bad at driving. <sighs> That's why I it. actually wasn't here at six on the dot. Oh yeah. <laughs> is, is, That's why I sold my motorcycle. I yeah. was like, yeah, I'm <sighs> not Great anymore. person. You've had yeah. one. I did. I did um, for a while. <laughs> but yeah. So like, it's like, it's, it's made my, my reflexes a lot better. It's made me more like situationally aware. Um, mm-hmm. It's also like, just helped me avoid violent situations that were like escalating sure around me you know totally um because you 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 start the one thing that i didn't expect was how much i would become um concerned with people oh and how it's developed empathy okay right so when when you especially like when, you, when you're doing karate and you're doing real hard style and you're, you're you're punching and kicking and you know you're you're trying to learn how to do these techniques effectively but you have to do them with your training partners who you obviously become friends with or at least develop some sort of relationship with you obviously don't want to hurt them sure and the selfish side of it is if you go around busting up your training partners to the point they can't train it affects you negatively yeah so you start to realize that we we kind of need to look out for each other in some way yeah because we all benefit 
when we're all getting the most out of each other. Absolutely. If, if you want to just look at it as like whole numbers. Yeah. If you're getting something out of a relationship with me, but I'm getting the equal in return, if mm -hmm. the scales are balanced, mm -hmm. you know, that's where it's like, cool. Yeah. That's good. And it teaches you that when you when you're training with people, you learn to you learn to kind of value people. I think if you if you're doing it right, you learn to value people. Yeah. You know, um, it'll also kind of make your bullshit tolerance go down a lot, but you learn how to control yourself better. Right. So that's like, that's <laughs> it's the give and also, take. You, yeah. You're like, oh, why is this person? So, like when, when, when you're walking around and someone's spinning in a circle in an aisle at the grocery store, mouth breathing, and you're like, why can't you just be more aware of your surroundings? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. you know, over there, over there, man, it gets, it gets real tough, <laughs> Sure. you know, but at the same time, you're like, oh, well, you know, not everyone does this, which is why everyone should do martial arts. Right. Seriously. Sure. Even for a little bit. I agree. Just make it stick, you know? Yeah. Um, the, the negative, and this is, this is where I was like quiet for a second. I was like thinking of how to, how to, how to, how to phrase this. it. It's like, <laughs> I didn't realize going. So when I was like, you just go to a place, you learn the martial arts. It's all good. We're all equal. This is all cool. This is great. This is great. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize the politicking that can happen in yeah. the martial arts world. Totally. And, and, and also weird elitism. Yeah, it's really weird that when you have a thing that's shown off as something that teaches you how to be hum, you know, humble like, mm -hmm. and 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 you know, circumspect and like you know, all these all these virtues. You know, mm -hmm. every person who's ever like gotten into the martial arts is that the virtues of Bushido. You know, and, sure. And then and then as you're getting into it, like you would expect, like I'm gonna be hanging out with like some really cool, good, morally sound people, whether or not we believe in the same things or whatever, vote the same way. Like these are people who are going to be, you know, upright citizens. Right. And, and, you know, make, make good decisions and be like the people you want to be around and right. you want them to want you around mm -hmm. and you try to emulate that and everything. And then, you know, you hear about like, uh, bribes for rank, yeah. you know, paying like tons of money for rank or all, all this other stuff because, you know, and, and, and you realize like how, how rigid a lot of things are. Mm -hmm. And then it gets into like factionism and stuff like that. And like, yeah. you know, oh, we don't like what those European martial arts guys are doing because it's not this and it's not that. And it's, well, you Japanese guys, you know, you think you know everything because you have this unbroken lineage and all this stuff. So you, but you're assholes and you don't train good or whatever. Right. And, and you start to realize that like you have this, like this, this, I don't want to call it a dream. It's not really a dream, but like this, this, this fantasy and this like obviously unrealistic idea of like, you're going to like step into this world where like we all just want to get better and we all just want to improve. And those people are out there. Right. But you, as, as you progress it, you meet people and you start to hear, you know, stories or you start to see things happening in front of you and you realize like, it ah. ain't all that cool <laughs> right. when like, ah. you know, um, Cause I just thought like, Oh, every place is a place and you go there and stuff like that. And, and you get people where like lineage is important. Yeah. You know, um, it is important because it's, it's a, it's a very quick way to like fact check. Right. This is where you're from because boom, you come from this line. Right. So that should mean that you are credible. Right. And you might have trained with that person. Mm hmm. You also might just be a bad teacher, though. That's a good point. But you've point. got the lineage. You know? Ah, that's and, a good point. And, and so when you, you – again, it's kind of like that like weird paradox of like you won't know you have a good teacher until you train with someone. But if your first teacher is a bad teacher who like brainwashes you into thinking right, he's great. Right, yeah. Like, you're like, well, my sensei hasn't shown me the super secret deadly technique of shooting lightning out of his armpits because I'm not ready yet. And everyone's like, that's fucking fake. Right, and, right. And so that was like the thing that was not what I expected. Okay, okay. And – you kind of have to learn to navigate as best as you can. Like I've been to Japan a couple of times now and um, I've never been able to stay, you know, indefinitely in train and everything like that. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be married if I did that. Right. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> Hey, I feel you. I yeah. feel you. But um, you know, I've met, I've met a lot of cool people. Uh, I've, I've been able to do some really cool things. Yeah. Train, train in some, some different styles, even, even if it's for like a day, you know? Sure. And, um, it, it's been it's been very valuable. I've learned a lot of lessons, mm -hmm. and and I've I've kind of seen a a broader aspect of the martial arts world by doing that. You know, I bet. And there's there's something cool when you can be on the other side of the planet, 
Yeah. And you, can, you can walk into a dojo. Uh, so there's, there's – and this is what I like about Instagram, actually. Yeah. I, I'm not one of those people that social media is ruining the world. I'm like, if you let it – Dude, I'm the same way. Like, when people like Twitter sucks, I was like, your timeline sucks. You can cultivate that. Exactly. I feel like, the same way. I, you know, I interact with who and what I want to interact with. So, I feel the same way. My so timelines are awesome. <laughs> there's I, – I got to meet um, – I didn't think I'd ever meet them either. There's, there's two sword accounts I follow from Japan. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, talk to them online and stuff. And I'm like, oh, you guys are so cool. And, like, you know, this is awesome. And they interact with me. And like, oh, well, what you're doing is really cool and stuff. Hell yeah. And so when I was going to Japan the second time, I'm like, hey, I'm going to be in Tokyo for like three days. No way. Um, I haven't planned which days yet. Mm-hmm. First of all, would it be okay sure. if I came to train with you? That's so cool. Absolutely. We train on these days and these days, and this is going to be more convenient if you come on this day. I'm like, you bet. That's it. Set in stone. That's what's happening. Dude. And um, the other the other guy I was interacting with, he was like, oh, I heard you're coming to Japan. He's like, can I come to this dojo with you? I'm like, well, I can't give you permission. Right. You know, but maybe. Here's the contact. Yeah. If you, if you ask. Sure. And, and so he ended up doing it, and I didn't realize this. He basically traveled the equivalent of like going from like Cape Coral to Naples. Oh, okay. Sure. To, to hang out with us. That's so and cool. And train with us. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, that's like for us, because we drive all the time. Yeah. It's different in Japan when not everyone has a car. Sure. You know, you rely on public transportation. It's like a trek. Yeah. It, it, it could be a bit of a journey. And if you're not used to making those huge treks, it, it can be inconvenient. Totally. And and so he showed up. And then I met, I met this girl that we were training with. And I met her sensei. And he's this really cool dude. And it was so weird because I'm like, I'm. On the other side of the planet. Yeah. I, I have the most frail grasp of the language. Yeah. But we're training together, and I go, these are people like me. Yeah. And we, we interacted in, in a way that, like, you know, yeah, like, um, you know, one of the people there could speak English. I could speak just enough Japanese to, like, not be completely clueless, but nowhere near proficient enough. Sure. You know, uh, there's a drought of Japanese people to practice with mm-hmm. in Naples, and plus, like, you don't want to, like walk up to yeah. someone in the grocery store and back like, and they'll, yeah. they'll look at you like well i'm just trying <laughs> well, to buy eggs uh, Brian? <laughs> yeah you know and, yeah. and so you can't yeah just approach people like that and stuff so it's, it's hard you know sure so basically every time i go to japan i just pull out the books and i like fumble around and talk to myself like a psychopath in third person but yeah do what you gotta um, do but it was it was so cool because you're you're there and you're like these are people like me yeah you know? and and they they you get like these weird things where um, people have preconceived ideas and then there's people who don't uh, always. And they, they took us as we were. It's the best. They were it? able to like realize that we were serious about martial arts, that we trained seriously, but just in a different thing. Sure. And they just had us join along with them. And it was really <sighs> cool. And it was, it was such a cool experience. And I've had too many to count, you know? Yeah. Um, I love you that. know, uh, we're training, um, we met a guy, um, Reggie. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he is a really talented martial artist, and he, he trains in multiple, multiple styles. And the first time we went to Japan, it was like a happenstance thing where we were trying to go to this dojo in mm-hmm. Nara. And there was a, a weird miscommunication where the lady who was hosting our Airbnb had her friend who was Japanese and better at phone Japanese, call this dojo, can these people come? Right. At the time, they, because you have to understand, this style is, is strongly associated with, uh, with with Buddhism, a certain sect of Buddhism. Oh, okay. At the time, they didn't let women train. Oh. And a lady called. Ah. And there was a, there was a break ah. in the chain, and they told her no. Right. So she told us no. And so now it's Sensei Dan. It's, uh, you haven't met Frank, I don't think. No, not yet. And and myself. This is our first trip. Oh, okay. And we're like, we're going to go anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and the worst thing they can do is say no again. Right. Yeah, if the first like, cut's always the deepest. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're not gonna like we're not gonna kick the door in. We're not gonna you know like John Wayne. Like, All right, pilgrim, I That's came right. to learn your America's here. Yeah, like we're <laughs> we just we're like I it, 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 we were all kind of like talked about it. Like I just think something got lost in translation. Right. Even though they were both speaking the same language. Right. Right. I, I just I think I got a feeling something wasn't 
what we thought it would be. Mm-hmm. So we show up, mm-hmm. and you know, at, at this, and, and at this time we were we were staying in Kyoto. We oh, okay. In Nara. So sure. We had to take a train to Nara. Oh, okay. It's like twenty bucks, which okay, it's twenty bucks, but like when you have a fixed income of what you can spend there, yeah, you're you're spending twenty dollars there, and you know it's another twenty dollars back, and you yeah. need to buy food, and you've never been to Nara, so you're. You're rolling the dice with a finite amount of resources totally. for the potential to just get kicked out. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. You know, but we but really wanted this. You so got to do it, up, yeah. And we, we, we you know, it's, it, it's like a public building. Mm-hmm. And then the training room is in the back and everything. And, you, you know, you hear the drums going. And they're getting ready for training. And we're like, oh. And we're like, okay. And we just literally, like, we took our shoes off where you're supposed to. And just kind of, like, left them there because we didn't know... Like we weren't gonna assume like we could just put them with you know, but they were like off out of the way, and we were just sitting in Seiza, oh. in the foyer of this building. Fantastic. And there's this one guy who walks past, and he stops, and he turns. He's like, "Can I help you?" <laughs> you know, he, he, was, he, was, he, was, he wasn't Japanese or foreigner. Like, sure. Well, we, we really would like to, and we 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 like shot low. We're like, we really would like the privilege, if it's okay, you know, with with the instructors to to just observe a class. Mm-hmm. He's like, "I'll go, I'll go ask him." He goes in and he asks, and we're, we're still sitting in Seiza. He's like, comes back. He's like, were you guys going to like come watch or sit in Seiza for the whole class outside? <laughs> like, well, we really like to come. He's like, okay, well, there, there's the stairway up to the bleachers, you know, and like, okay, where do we put our shoes? And, and um, so we're watching, and then it was actually the head of the style. Wow. He was, he was the one that was running class that day. And he, he's talking, and then this is how we met uh, Reggie. Mm-hmm. And he, he comes up, he's like, oh, well, you know, he's invited you down if you, if you want to try. And we're like, absolutely. Yeah. And so we're, we're explaining, like, this is actually why we came to Japan. Right. And it wasn't like this as in just sampling martial. No, no. We wanted to experience even like a small part of this specific style. Yeah. That's why we went. Like. Yeah, we sight saw, we bought souvenirs, we ate totally. lots of food and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. it was centered around showing up yeah. on the day that they had training That's to so cool. even just see it. Yeah. You know? And so we ended up, uh, Dan and I, on our next trip, ended up going back and we got to hang out and see Reggie again. Dude. And, you know? And it was just awesome. Yeah. You know? And it, it's one of those things where, like, I'm all about being respectful totally and and stuff like that and we, we we tried our best with our limited ability like i sure we fumbled the ball a few times or did something <laughs> that was seen as like taboo or rude and we, we we tried our best you know right um but it's one of those things where like you kind of have to take a risk yeah once in a while you know i agree and the risk was like well we came here for this one thing yeah. we have to again they can slam the door. In our face. I don't, at this point, I didn't care if someone like punched me for like, right. the audacity of showing up after we told you asshole. Like I would have been fine with it just to know for sure. Like, Oh, doors closed. Yeah. But instead what happened was they were very, very welcoming. They were very cool. They were, you know, open to explaining different things and stuff, you know, and like, they didn't like, you know, obviously give us the whole, you know, thing. Right. Cause yeah, it's not course. what any dojo does. It's not what any style does, but they let right. us, they let us participate. They let us try. They let us learn a little bit. And it, it's going to sound like cliche. It's it's like, obviously that's a memory that's going to stick with me forever. And it's something yeah. that I'm always going to think, but I learned a lot mm. about martial arts. Really? And see, here's, here's the thing. When you breadth of view, yeah. open, okay. you know, and, and, and flexible. Mm-hmm. I try to keep my mind as flexible as possible and have as, as open of a viewpoint as I can. Mm-hmm. I'm not good at it. But right. that's what I that's what I try to do. Sure. And there was there was a one point where I was actually uh, working with Reggie and everything. This is a guy I, I really really like him. He's he's cool. I mean, he's he's kind of like done like the movie life. Like he yeah he, he's been in Japan. He's training in all these styles. He's actually he's really he'll tell you he's not a good martial artist. He's actually he Those knows are the best stuff, kind. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and so he's he's helping me with the technique, and it's really cool when you get to feel what he's talking about. You know, mm-hmm. and it, it, it was like a split second, but it altered how I view a lot of different things oh. in martial arts, not just in like karate or swordsmanship or whatever, you know, it, it's, and th- there's like so many little things that you, you pick up when you pay attention that you don't, I mean, obviously you can't say, well, I learned this style in one day. You can't say right. like you figured out all the secrets, but 
sometimes you can get more than you thought you would get out of an hour. Yeah. Sometimes it will happen. Sometimes you'll go months without like feeling like you're making yeah. <laughs> any progress at all. Yeah. And then sometimes someone will just like say or do or move in a way where like it, it, it feels like there's an explosion in your head and like yeah. you're seeing like, you know, just kaleidoscopic mandalas of enlightenment. You're like, holy shit. You know? Right. And, it just clicks. And so it's one of those things where, you know, you you can't can't put a price on stuff like that. I agree. And so when when I tell people I spent three thousand dollars for my first lesson in this style, they go, "What the fuck?" Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, airfare and lodging and food and transportation and stuff. Right. I was like, but I would spend it twice over. And actually, the second time I spent more money to go back, and we got two lessons. Hell yeah. And you know, it's it's one of those things where like we probably won't ever be back to that school. Like, mm -hmm. and at the same time, also rightfully so. Like. We don't need to show up every two years and take up their time from their students. Right. They they were more than generous in in letting us participate mm -hmm. the times that they did. And like I said, like we we tried our best to be as respectful and and you know what we can do. We try to do our best right. to be good students in a foreign land learning something they've never learned before. Absolutely. You know, because again, like, you know, we're like, okay, well, we're kind of representing Americans here and we get a bad rap, you know, worldwide for like, you know, yeah. just being like, yippee ki -yay, and like, yeah. you know, <laughs> shooting guns and sh like, like, no, no. Like, and so, I mean, if, if it ever turns out, I find out like through the grapevine, like, man, they thought you were the rudest son of a right. bitch. Like, <laughs> I'll never forgive myself. Sure. Because sure. I really, really wanted to make a good impression and not to like butter them up. Like I'll get more if I'm not, it's just literally like a thing. Like, no, no, like they are doing me a favor. Right. They get nothing out of me being here. Right. So I need to at least be as respectful as I can. I need to be the, the best student I can be. I need to listen. I like, you know, just the, 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 one of the easiest ways to be a good student is just shut the hell up most of the time. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and so like I tried, I tried my best. And if I wasn't getting something, I tried to not get frustrated, you know, because it's not their fault. I'm not getting it. It's my fault. It's my body. That's being stupid. So, right. Right. And, Relatable. So it, it's, it's, <laughs> Trust me, don't stop there. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> so I, I really hope that, um, you know, I uh, maybe at, at the end of all time and stuff, I won't get like a repeat where I get to see from someone else's perspective, like, when is this fucking guy leaving? You know? Right, like, right. Because again, it's one of those things where it's, it made such a huge impact Yeah. in my own personal training. I bet. That I've, if I find out that I flubbed the ball and they're like using me as an example of yeah. what not to be, <laughs> I'd be right. really upset, you know? Sure. There's no way that happened. I But I, I love that though. And I think that says a lot about you as a person as well as a martial artist that you're open to that. You know what I mean? You don't go in like, I'm going here. I'm going to get this. You didn't take anything away. You went there like – to experience it all and then they gave you a gift of that experience and then you acknowledged it as such yeah it wasn't like i'm going in here i'm bringing this i'm taking it out it was like a it's humility you know and i think the best martial artists are humble because anyone who's like i'm the biggest badass dude i'm like you're probably not it's the ones that are quiet and are like I, i'll show you something sure those are the scary ones because there's that confidence in the ability you know yeah well the other thing about being humble is there's always someone that will quickly disillusion you. Yeah, for sure. Whether it's in like a congenial sort of way mm -hmm. um, or if it's like, you know, uh, verbal or physical reproach. Like, like you said, there's always someone bigger. There's always someone yep. better. Like you, and, and that's actually to, to re-answer one of your questions about what you got that you didn't expect mm -hmm. is – serious training in martial arts and this is this is why everyone needs to do it i think mm -hmm. not just for the the physical benefits and stuff like that but you learn to lose yeah all the time yeah and you're only losing to yourself mm -hmm. and that teaches you the essence of life i think so you know because you might have a really successful day but then you lose somehow yeah and it gets at you, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you're, you're, you're trying to get better and you're trying to get better and you're trying to improve and you're trying to improve and you just feel like you're just stuck in quicksand the mm -hmm. whole time. And you, you, uh, you have two choices. You can just give up. Yeah. Or you can keep trying, mm -hmm. you know? Oh yeah. And, and that's really all it is. And that's all, it, all life is like, you know, we were talking earlier about like, you know, inequality and how just like, 
just kind of shit a lot of things can be in the world and yeah. you know socially and stuff like that mm-hmm. and again th- you have two choices oh yeah you could just give up or you could keep trying and it's like i would love to just flip a switch yeah. where <laughs> everyone is on actual equal footing but there's still something to strive for where it's like no no like you you don't have to like you can go to the doctor and right you can yeah work your job <laughs> and if you're if you're cool with being like just a janitor like, well, yeah. we need janitors. Like, there's no reason to discourage someone from being yeah. like, I'm cool with being a janitor. For real. I'm cool with being the guy that works at McDonald's. Like, Agreed. You know, I'm not going to talk shit about a guy working at McDonald's. You know what? When I go there in the morning for, you know, a bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddle, like, yeah. yeah Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I kind of want someone to be there. <laughs> I'm you know? with you. And I'm... so I'm never going to disparage these people. But then when there's the people who do want more. Yeah. And, and, and that's where I think that the wanting to acquire skills and work harder, that's where it comes in is that, you know, these things exist for a reason. Totally. Everything exists for, there's nothing that exists that doesn't have a reason or a purpose. Mm-hmm. If it didn't have reason or purpose, it wouldn't exist. It's a good point. It's a good point. And, and so, you know, whether it's in the martial arts, whether it's in, you know, uh, job setting or, you know, interpersonal relationships or whatever, like. You ha- it makes you really think di- – like this exists. Yeah. Therefore, there is a reason it's here, mm-hmm. and I'm engaging with it. There is a purpose. Yeah. You 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 have to respect that. I think so. You know, and so, yeah, it's just one of those things where like it, it – you know, training has taught me to lose a lot and yeah. how to like keep going. Keep going. And, and – That's so important though to be able to do that. That's something that I am lucky enough that – I don't know if it was just in me – like from the beginning or something that like life has taught me through being through some shit is like, I'm good at losing and I'm cool with it. Like, I mean, I lost three times in a row to you, Yeah, <laughs> you know, like I lost once and I could have been like, all right, that was cool. I was like, I didn't, I don't know what happened. You got to pick it up. And I did it again. And then I did it again. And I was like, okay, I physically can't do it again. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I knew, you know, it's, that's important. That's how you learn. Well, and you like, know? I'm really grateful that you actually brought that up and we talked about it again. Because I can't believe you remember it. <laughs> well, part of it's like, man, that was really cool. For me, it was cool yeah. because I got to see my technique working. Sure. Which totally. is important for, me too. for people. I got to see your technique working. Well, but but <laughs> hopefully you learn more. But also, I'm glad that you took that as a positive experience and not, man, you such a dickhead, you know? But, no, yeah. Um, no, it's funny how you said, like, you know, been through, been through a lot of shit and everything. And I always joke around with people and, like, you know uh, – buddha said to be is to suffer yeah yeah and i exist therefore yeah <laughs> yeah i must suffer you know right or, or i tell people like i don't understand how you do your job you know i explain like some of the things i've had to do like you know uh messed my eye up really bad you know rototipping a building to paint oh, it and I everything bet. and it i had a paint chip and a piece of stucco go behind my glasses get stuck in my eye ah. i had to wear an eye patch for three days it was Sheesh. right before you came i looked real cool i had an eye patch <laughs> over my left eye you know? ah, i missed and it the, the, so the funny thing is is when i wake up in the morning this eye is still swollen up i suspect there's still really you know, uh something does it hurt i can see it doesn't hurt but oh, that's good. it puffs up in the morning it looks like i got punched really you know but <laughs> can't afford doctors that's da, da, right da, 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 da. yeah i hear um, you <laughs> but you know it's an important perspective to be able to lose and keep going on. Yeah, you get your so, ass kicked sometimes. And stuff. Yeah. But, oh, that's the, the, I don't know how you do it. I'm like, well, I'm just good at suffering. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just good at suffering. You yeah. Know? It's and it's a valuable skill. You, you like, you gotta, you gotta, like, find the line. Like, you don't want to be too cynical. Totally. You know, but, like, some spite. Right. That's how you get through the day is spite. Like, literally, it's spite. No, yeah, I'm not right. Gonna let this, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to let this keep kicking my ass. My, that's right. My dad taught me a really important lesson early on, and it was, uh, he was, he was fixing our well pump. Mm-hmm. If you ever live where you had on well water, right? Yeah, the yeah. pump blows up when you don't want it to blow up. It's usually when you're taking a shower, Always. the water stops, but it's yeah. <laughs> after you've soaped up but not rinsed off. The perfect time. <laughs> so you got this like sludgy shampoo running in your eyes, and your armpits are slippery, and you can't yep. walk because you got soap, on, mm-hmm. and you've got to go figure out why the water's gone. Well, the water's gone because Outside. it's shooting into your backyard. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, I learned how to change, you know, well pumps. Hang sure. out with my dad. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I also learned lots of colorful phrases watching my dad of course. change well pumps. It's all part of the process. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> But he told me, he's like, you never let a thing beat you. Get it. And that's I love that. the life lesson is you never let a thing beat you. There you go. Because why would you? you know? I agree. And it's, it's, it's helped me out a lot. There's I bet. definitely times where me not letting the thing beat me is breaking the thing. But, I you mean. Know, 
you still won, you know. Uh, you got to assert <laughs> dominance somewhere. You got to draw that line. That's know? right. That's so funny. My dad taught me that in life when you're brought before any situation, you have two options. Change it or get over it. Yeah, exactly. And that was it. That's all you have. Yeah. 100% because you don't have time. You yeah. don't know if you're out tomorrow. You have no idea. Do not waste your time. Change it or get over it. There was there was one since we're just sharing words of wisdom at this point. Sure, these are actually all good ones. There was um yeah yeah. I was talking with uh, Sensei Mason about something mm-hmm. one time, and I was just explaining it. it's like frustrating. Sure, it's, just, it's really annoying. You know? And he just looked at me. He's like, "You get to choose what annoys you." Oh my gosh, <laughs> Sensei, Here I am, like feeling like so justified in, in a situation, right. and then he just. <laughs> He, like, first of all, changes my life for the better. Of course. By making me feel like yeah. the dumbass. Like, because it's true. Like, like That's the most sensei phrase I've ever heard. <laughs> being annoyed is simply uh, an internal reaction to outside stimulus. Yeah. And yeah. the instinctual level, you can't help. Mm-hmm. But true. you can help the, the, the immediate after effect. The residue, yeah. The so, impact like, happens. You know, when, when traffic annoys you, you're like, that. it's like someone cuts you off. It's like the instant. Ah, oh, I'm like, well, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, fuck it. Like, you get, I'm not, you have the option to control it. Why are you going to yeah. let it ruin your day? Yeah. Did you have a bad day or a bad five minutes? Exactly. You know? and, yeah. and I'm not saying you should just be like, you know, sheep to the slaughter, placid throughout everything. And right. Like those times where things should piss you off. Absolutely. But Absolutely. Most of, of the things that people do get pissed off about. Agreed. Do we really need to? It's true. Get to a point where you can choose when you get to be that angry. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, you save it up. Yeah, Take exactly. <laughs> you wait till Thursday nights. <laughs> no, no. Actually, no, I don't do that. Um, that's one of the remarkable things. Is like, So at the beginning of class, we do mokso. Yeah. I seldom feel that cool. Oh, except okay. for that. You just really? let it go. I love that. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I save it up for when I need a money day at work. There you go. It's like, oh, man, I'm behind. I'm pissed off. And life is just stupid. And then, like, you, you like have, like, a fever dream. You wake up. It's 5 o'clock, and you've painted an entire house yourself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, right. Okay. Cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> just funnel it. That's a, another benefit of martial arts, learning to funnel. You yeah. Know? <laughs> well, and then what's really cool is then you can get even more upset on Friday when you're out of work because you worked yourself out of a job for the week. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's you know, a give and, and take. And again, you save it up. Life, week, life is balance. Exactly. As Brian balance, I can confirm. There you, you go. Know? It's, it's, it's a very big part of your life. It's your name. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's Puns are in like uh, subliminal at this point. I don't have a choice. <laughs> do, do you find that people get mad at you for puns? I don't stick around long enough to find oh. out. <laughs> I find some people are like, oh, really? I'm like, guys, listen, when your name is a word, you that don't have a choice. You don't, even have to, you don't have to go that far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just go, what's the matter? You can't handle the punishment. That's right. <laughs> and I'm just going to say right now, that is not my intellectual property. <laughs> uh, the real people who <laughs> played Legend of Mana oh, really? will know what I'm talking about. I love it. That's... I love it. I'm a big fan of puns. So, you know, you got to be. But... They don't upset me. Yeah, me neither. Uh, they're like dad jokes to me. It's yeah, just one of those which are me. also it's hilarious. It's a rite of passage. You make puns when you've had enough horrible things happen to you in life. And Agreed. puns are just... It's easy. It's, yeah. it's good food. Yeah. <laughs> what else are you going to do, you know? I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, 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 I will say that I'm very glad how active you are on social media because that is how I found class. Ah. Because, again... I don't do anything uh, like right away. I think about it all and I weigh my options because like you said, you don't want to go to a dojo and then learn something that's ineffective or quote unquote wrong. Right. And I'm really serious about that. And like, I don't want to learn bad habits. Mm -hmm. I understand that I have them already going in. So correct me. Like when in class, I'm like, can you please correct my form? And you're like tiny adjustments. I was like all day long, send them to me. Then I, I subscribe to that. And I remember going to class the first day and I immediately was like, I'm going to do the first kata for a year. That's my goal. I was like, I was like, that's my goal is just, this is where I'm sitting and I'm going to keep going and I'm going to do the best I can. And my idea of a track is the first year I'm on the first kata and I'm cool with that. And since then, obviously sensei doesn't move you on until he thinks you're ready. But the thing that I love the most about Thursdays is I'm not big on to the The whole like, hey, we're a big family. Come in and join this. I'm like, but what about the style? I want to learn the art. I want to go to a place where you're like, this is king. We're not like, hey, we're going to come hang out on Thursdays and that's why we're here. I want to, I want respect for the art Mm -hmm. above all. And I love going to class because everyone's there to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and like there's, 
there's obviously again you can't spend you know years and years and like some people it's like decades yeah there's plural. absolutely camaraderie that you comes from this not have that agreed um and you know there's there's a lot of people who have more rigid dojos there's a lot of people who have even more relaxed dojos and totally i, I really love the way sensei teaches and runs class and everything because there's Me definitely too. the part where you you have to follow yeah and you have to do there's that tradition like this is how we do things but the way he teaches and having been there for a while and everything is yeah you're learning way more than you realize you're learning oh yeah and he he allows for that exploration of self and exploration of the kata yeah now Again, like you get reeled in real quick if you start going into like weirdo land. Oh yeah. You know. Oh yeah. Um, but it's it's one of those things where now there's there's some dojos, there's some styles, there's some teachers you don't get to ask questions. True. True. Or you don't get to ask questions a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, there's some places where there's a specific time, there's a specific ritual to doing all these different things, and you know, once the beginning of class is done. Where mm -hmm. we all go through everything together. Yep. You 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 can yeah totally. ask questions. You totally. can approach people and and ask for help or ask for insight. Mm -hmm. uh, but then what happens with that is up to you. Yeah. See, yeah. I've I've had times where I'm working with with students and everything, and I will give them all of the secrets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to see what happens. Here yeah. you go, man. And um, sometimes they get better, and sometimes. It's like, oh, so that's how you want to do that. Right. Okay. Right. That's up to you. You made your choice. Mm -hmm. Can I, I, you know, and, and, but that's the thing is, you know, everyone's going to get and take and become different things. Absolutely. And, and it's one of the things that, you know, whenever the day comes where I'm like not horrible at martial arts and I get to teach, <laughs> you know, and like I have my own, have right. my own school or whatever. I like, will be there. Right, it's well, on record. You know, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Go abandoning Sensei. He's gonna always be better than me. That's right. That's right. He's gonna I'm, Sensei listen. could like get abducted by aliens, and I could keep training <laughs> straight for thirty years, and he could just be not doing anything in stasis, and he'll still be better oh, yeah. than me. Like, I've I, seen I, him stand, like, and I'm like, the I, man. Wow. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I there's, agree. There's got to be some sort of like either like Saiyan blood or like yeah. Android modification. Like he's it, ascended. Listen, you've <laughs> never seen his full speed i don't no. think i've seen it like i saw you and him go through the kinjutsu kata and i've not been the same since uh, that's, yeah, <laughs> and going, that's considered nothing like he was being real kind yeah that day that that was yeah because we we're both rusty we yeah were shaking off the like uh, okay so again these, these weird <laughs> moments where you realize like you suck only a little bit less yeah that's the than goal you did that's last time yeah because it was we were doing kenju this was years ago years ago we're doing kenjutsu mm -hmm. and we're both like getting into it and like you know sensei is really big about you know striking with intention you yeah know, like a, uh, a half ass strike that doesn't give the same sense of urgency it doesn't give the same and um he 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 caught me sleeping oh boy but he he did all the things correctly mm -hmm. but i was like two in my own head yeah and so this cut was coming out of nowhere and and like oh, no. at this point in time, I got the, the only thing I remember is, and it happened at the same time. It had to have, because if not, I would have not. I wouldn't be telling you the story. I'd be oh, eating yeah. pudding. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you see his like pupils. They like his eyes look black. Like oh, like no. his, like they're, they're, he like, was his, in. Yeah, it's like hyper fucking. You know when a cat's like ready to like. It was We're that. talking anime style. <laughs> and like <laughs> and I didn't. I saw. I just saw movement. And yeah. at the same time, my brain's like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. And I got my sword in the way. Oh. And that was the end of it. I was like, ah. And he's like, what? I'm like, uh, sorry, I was, you know, my fault. And he's like, oh. I'm like, but I remember <laughs> thinking, I'm like, I didn't die. Ah. I, I, I got my sword in the way. Like, the next one would have gotten me because my brain stopped after that. And there was the lesson. Right. Is, you know, uh, you ever read any of uh, Takwan Soho's work? That, that, mm -hmm. That's called the abiding place. You stuck. Right, you're stuck. Your mind stopped, mm -hmm. and that's where I would have would have ended up dying because the second cut would have caught me sleeping again. Right, and I probably would have just fell for it. So, yeah. <laughs> but it was I sucked less because going from completely caught off guard with a which was my fault and pay attention, mm -hmm. obviously. Right, um, being completely caught off guard with a person who was striking with the intention. Now, granted, since I had the control, where he would not have 
injured right. me. He would have been able to stop because he's just not he's human. Sensei, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, and you, get, you get bumps and bruises, you know, yeah, doing, doing any martial art and stuff. So, sure. like, but it wouldn't have been like fatal or whatever, you know. Right. But it was, I managed to do something. Right. And that condition that, reflex response was there to at least, even when you're mentally yeah. not there, your body's like, hey. <laughs> and that result in my mind was only cool for 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> because I wanted the next step. Right. Right. The next step and the next step and the next step and the next step, you know, because literally you have to always have an appetite. Yeah. Training. You always need to have room for dessert because Mm -hmm. when you least expect it, that's when like the real teaching happens. Right. You know, and, and you know, there's going to be, there's going to be times where when you're learning future katas, you're going to realize like you kind of got a lesson in that kata like a year and a half ago. Yeah. How? Well, cause sensei is really cool at slipping in. Yeah. Things that you're not realizing because they're relevant to what you're learning. Right. But they're relevant to what you're going to learn too. Yeah. And that that's one thing I respect about him so much is it'll blow your mind. Like I'm not even at the end yet, you know, obviously. Like, yeah. But like looking back and realizing it's just like, Oh, uh, it's right. like, it's like, uh, you know, uh, what is it? National treasure when they're like realizing all these deep, you know, free yeah. conspiracies and it's on the constitution or whatever. It's like yeah. the declaration of independence. That's what, you yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. You're like, Oh my God, all this stuff. It's here. It's been here right in front of us this whole time. And that's the same thing. You're like, yeah. Wow. This guy is blowing my mind with how much he's set up in the future. And because you're not yeah. still in the future, mm-hmm. you don't know what he actually set up. It's, it's so crazy. Sure. Like layers I, on layers, man. I love it. I, I, I love, yeah, I love his teaching style. I, I mean, from day one, I was like, all right, I've missed one class since, and it was because my car decided not to work. And like, you know, I'm in. But I, I, I love bad that... for you on that one because yeah. you had <laughs> reverse Josh. Yeah. Because <laughs> the last time we trained in Naples. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. My truck broke down on the way home. Yeah. <laughs> so you need yeah. to have a talk with your vehicle. You break yeah. down after class. Yeah, I tried. He just, oh, God. One day he'll learn the same. <laughs> you tried kicking it; it works in the movies. Yeah, it, it you know it kicked back and then stopped kicking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's I I love the I love how he teaches. I love that it's I love that everything like you said it exists for a reason. Mm-hmm. Every movement that you're doing, here's why your foot does this, and here's why. And it's like yeah. here's ten reasons why I'm asking you to put your hand here. Yeah. It's like oh, so now I've been doing it three months consistently. I started September. Awesome. And so I'm like, I'm loving it. Cause like you, it's something I've wanted to do my whole life, but just never had the opportunity. Yeah. And then thanks to you posting, I was like, Oh what? And then you trained in Naples for a while. And I was like, yeah, you it's just right it. here. Yeah. You well, know? And like the cool thing, you know, I would, I would like eventually to be able to continue whether it's like training there or yeah. you know, in the future when, you know, when I'm able to like lead classes or whatever, like yeah. lead class there or whatever. Uh, cause it's just, it, when, when it's just a cool place to train. Yeah. Like I think so. Those are awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, uh, but also like, you know, it's, it's like I told people, you know, it's, it's, even if it was only for like a month or two, it's like finally my turn yeah. <laughs> to not have to make this long drive. And which again, yeah. you know, for me it's, it's you, you will put equal effort in to what you value. hundred percent. Like for example, I, I'm training, uh, it's only once a month. Mm-hmm. I, I like being married. Yeah. So, you know, Fair. I understand. <laughs> My wife and I made this compromise. It's only once a month, but I drive to Clearwater for training. Really? I, I'm, I'm training with other people in mm-hmm. Clearwater, and yeah, make that trek there and back again. They right think on. I'm insane. I'm like, I, but 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 you're doing something I want, and you're you're doing yeah. something that I don't have in Naples or anywhere else, and it's here, and I can learn it, and you know, and and you know, you get a lot of people who are like, oh, you should stick with one style forever. You should. It's like you know, yes, you should, but also maybe you shouldn't. Right. Yeah. Because. The person, like, mm-hmm. you start looking into a lot of styles. Yeah. Right? Now, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to put myself on a level with, like, you know, patriarchs of a sword style or karate style or right. anything. Mm-hmm. But they would have said the same thing about themselves, too. Yeah, absolutely. And the, th- the thing is, like, so um, you look at with Muso Shinnenru, Nakayama Hakuto, who learned mm-hmm. a bunch of styles. You mm-hmm. look at other, other styles. Yeah. They have their founder did other styles. Yeah. Depending on what styles their founder do- did and learned and trained in, he may or may not have taken a blood oath to not alter teachings or train people outside of the day. But right. you know what? Um, he then went back to wherever. Yeah. And so you have, it, it almost seems like it's like a modern change where it's, you stick with one thing until you die. Right. You know, because back in the day, 
you know, granted you, you were a professional warrior, so your job was literally get good at not dying. So you, right. you were working 40 hours a week. You weren't, you know, but again, it's everyone has different things that yeah. they're expecting to get, you yeah. know, and you know, I, I had, I had a couple of conversations with, with like uh, Dan about it and with sensei and like, Hey, you know, I kind of want to go here. I want to go learn this. Like, obviously if it's, if, if you, th- if you see it as an issue, I'll, I'll respect that. Right. You know, but it's something I want to do. And, and, and since it was like really cool about like talking about it and it was kind of weird. Cause I got the same, almost the same conversation from him. And then this person I'm training with, it's like, we have to be able to keep things separate. Right. And you don't want to, you don't want a half style of each. Right. And yeah. you don't want to, you don't want to like mix the peanut butter with the jelly, you know, it's, that makes sense. And, um, it's one of those things where obviously time will tell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so far so good. Like I'm not. I'm not mixing stuff up. I'm not doing like one of our katas and like at the end, like being like, and this is what I do. And it's like, that's right. like, where did that come from? It's like, Oh shit. Sure. You know? Um, what I will say is I'm able to, with the very, very little I've learned, mm-hmm. um, analyze it. Yeah. Compare it to what I've been doing. Mm-hmm. Hold them up to each other and not say, this is better. This is worse. This is better. This is worse. It's, mm-hmm. it's like, you realize I've been saying this because uh, one of my friends does European martial arts. He's, mm-hmm. he's really good, really, really accomplished swordsman. Um, we, we always say there's only so many ways you can kill someone with a sword, you know, good point. And that's not to say every style is the same. They're obviously not right. But what you realize is like, there's, there's always an underlying philosophy in what you're doing mm-hmm. based on school, based on sometimes it has to do with location. It has to do with time and place. And yeah. What armor was someone wearing at the time? And that, that's what would help a technique evolve, you know? Right. But, um, you realize like the approaches are what differ, mm-hmm. even though the effect is going to be similar. Like, yeah. You know, some styles, they use more of like a whipping cut. Some styles use more of a chopping cut. Some styles are really heavy on a draw cut. Some styles, they, you know, they use two swords or they really deflection heavy or really evasion heavy and stuff like that. But like, it, it, and for me, what it is, is it's helped me to appreciate what I'm doing at our dojo more. Yeah. But what I'm doing at my dojo or our dojo helps me appreciate what they're doing more too. Right. I, like I don't, I don't discriminate between them. I'm right. not like, oh, I think this is better. This is worse. Now, there's certain technique mm-hmm. that I don't like. Sure. Across the board. Like, there's certain karate cards I've learned. I'm like, I really don't like that one. Yeah. And it's not because it's so hard. I can't do it. I'm like, I just don't really agree with the principles in that one. Right. That's not how I would choose to do it, which is congratulations. That's how you get new styles. Like, exactly. That's, that's literally it. And I'm do not what trying works. to, um, you know, commandeer or usurp order or steal things. Like, mm-hmm. you know, one, one of the things that I'm training in, you know, it's I, I kind of like the idea of learning just – a super, super old, super, super, super historical style. And like, it's kind of like taking like, um, I don't want to say ownership because it's not mine. Right. But you're, you're a caretaker of something that's really old that needs to be cared for. Right. You know, style's badass. It doesn't need someone to protect it, but it's like, no, no, right. like, the, 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 the sensei is good enough to teach me. He's doing me the favors. I'm not doing right. him anything. I'm mm-hmm. not doing him any favors. I'm just this dude that shows up once a month and he goes, that's what you do. I'm like, oh, cool. I'll, I'll try it. I'll see you in a month, and you can yeah. tell me how bad I am at this. And he's like, well, right. Yeah. Like, of course. I'm like, cool. I'm glad we understand each other. Like, I'm going to be really bad at this, right? And you're going to tell me about it, and I'm going to try to be less bad, and you know, cool, All right? Right. And and so it's cool because I'm learning something that has a lot of you know separate tradition and separate history, and it it comes from different areas of Japan, and it's all this other stuff, and it's the same thing with learning different karate styles. It's like mm-hmm. you know they all came from Okinawa, right? And you can go to Okinawa and you can learn this style and you can go to Tokyo and you can learn the same style, but it's not the same style right. because J- mainland Japan evolved karate a lot differently than how Okinawans did karate. Sure. And the Okinawans have a very like, this is our way. Yeah. You know, and it's good. I think it's good. I think there has to be differences. Yeah. I, I actually enjoy that. There's so many differences. I'm not a big fan of uh, standardizing. Yeah, I agree with know? that. Certain things have to be, in a style especially, standardized. Like, yeah. this is how you do Joran no Kamai. This is how you hold the sword. This right. is how you do Noto. The foundation has to be strong, but then you can adapt to the situation. But I love the differences of the same things across the yeah. style pl- uh, spectrums. Yeah, you same. know, And that's, that's what's really cool. I think that's actually a great point. And for somebody who's done martial arts for so long, what is some bit of advice that you would give to someone who wants to get into martial arts because everyone should do it but mm. if you were to be like hey remember this mm. well 
the first thing you have to do, I think, and because I've had people ask me, what martial arts should I do? What style should I learn? What should I do? Right. Well, the first thing you have to do is uh, ask yourself questions. Sure. The first one is, what is it you're looking for? Great point. You know, so um, if you're if you're a kid who, you know, like me, you're you're first starting to wanting to do this stuff was like, you know, you were four years old watching the Ninja Turtles movie. Like, yeah, yeah. OK, you know, you kind of need to um, update your ideas about what martial arts are. Right, yeah. Like, <laughs> they're, 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 you know, sure. You can go into that stuff. The sewers if, are public. If you want to like jump around and you want to learn stuff like that well i mean i'm sure there's a place for you right i don't know where it's at yeah but, you know um <laughs> yeah so the the first thing you, you gotta ask yourself some questions and you have to this will be your first lesson in martial arts is to be really honest with yourself yeah you know yeah everyone i think has this this um ethereal ideal of what they want to be and we're all trying to get there you totally know? but you, what you have to do when you're considering martial arts is look at where you are today Oh, that's a great point. And so you have to ask, like, okay, you know, if we'll, 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 we'll say we're just talking about unarmed martial arts. Okay? Sure. There's a lot to choose from. Yeah. What oh, yeah. place should you be at? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, um, are you a history buff? Do you want to learn about culture? Do you want to learn about history while learning a physical transmission of history? Okay. Well, then you should probably look into uh, – Japanese or Chinese martial arts, Mm -hmm. you know, that have these long, unbroken chains of history. Okay. So that that's your first step. Now, if you want to learn just how to fight for sports fighting, then the the field opens back up again. Right. For it's not narrow. You know what I mean? And every style has their traditions and history. So that's not to take away from what they have. Like, for example, uh, Muay Thai. Right. You know, that has... A, a lot of history to it, a lot of culture to it. Um, mm-hmm. And there's other there's other martial arts, like uh, I think it's Kali, the stick fight yep, from yep. the Philippines. A yep. lot of history and culture there. There's a lot of interplay with other culture and stuff in all of those martial arts because people went places forever, right. you know? Right. Um, so, you know, that's, again, not to say Japan's the only thing with culture. is the, Right. Those are the most readily accessible. Sure. Is, is what I mean by that. So mm-hmm. just in case someone's going to like try to get triggered on me. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? No, no. The, yeah. Everything has a reason and a purpose. We talked about this. Right. Um, right. Anyways. <laughs> so the next thing you have to do is go, okay, I want to learn an unarmed martial art. Okay. Um, so again, here's where you get to be really honest with yourself. Yeah. What do you want out of it? Sure. Are you an athlete? You just want some sports? Okay. Well, now you got Taekwondo. You mm-hmm. have sport karate. You have, you know, uh, I'm sure there's some form of competition kung fu. Mm-hmm. If you want to get really into the nitty gritty, do Brazilian jiu jitsu. You know, they do competitions. A lot of those places, you have to do competitions to get, you know, not, I don't want to say rank. I'm not saying like, oh, you won, you get a blue belt. Now it's, I don't know. I've never done Brazilian jiu jitsu. Right. Um, but I'm imagining that's part of their grading criteria. Same with like judo. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, competitions, you know, uh, if you want some other form fencing yeah find a find, find a fencing school that also does like hema where it's historical fencing so you learn like yeah this is the competition shit you see on the olympics and it's really fun and it's really athletic and it takes a lot of skill but this is how you put a raper through someone's freaking face you know right um do mma if you want to compete there, there's plenty of mma gyms there's plenty yeah. of you know and and I, I hate when people are like you know MMA isn't like you know traditional martial arts. There's no principles. There's no morality. There. Listen, if you're learning from a person who's a decent human being, you're going to learn moral lessons from where you're training. Yeah, it's not got the same cultural ties right. as you know like judo, Japanese jujitsu, or Brazilian jujitsu. For you know at the, at this point, it's so intertwined with with Brazil. Right. That there there has to be some form of cultural. Um, sure bleed through that is Absolutely. going to come on you so you know and then you have to think okay how would i fight if i want to learn self-defense how how would i fight right now if someone just attacked me what would be for my first thing mm-hmm. you know and you have to think about like what again be honest look at yourself in the mirror what do you think you would be able to do better are you someone who's gonna you think you're predisposed to grappling well then go go to a jiu-jitsu school right you know go go to a wrestling school if there's not one around you you know mm-hmm. um if if you're someone who who likes you know, if you think you're more inclined to striking, again, field opens up, find a Muay Thai place, all right? Uh, find an MMA school. You know, if, if you want to do striking, but you want to, you know, have a little bit more of the cultural stuff, okay, find, find you know, find a Kokushinkai karate school or find find any karate style and then have that talk with the sensei. You know, you're not going to tell right. the sensei what to teach you. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to, 
a, a good sensei is going to want to know what you want. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then the next thing to do is be honest with yourself. Am I going to be humble enough to get my ass kicked? Yeah. Whether it's mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and it's all going to happen. I'm not saying you're going to get abused. You might feel it's abuse, but chances are you're just learning how to lose to yourself, you know? Right. Um, now, if you want to learn weapons, okay, it, ask yourself those same questions. Mm-hmm. Okay. The next thing you got to ask yourself is what are you willing to sacrifice for it? Yeah. And that's the next big thing. Yeah. Because I can't tell you how many times, like, um, I've been training in the park with, with, with Sensei Dan a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so cool. Can you teach me? No, not here. Yeah. Okay, but there <laughs> is a dojo in Fort Myers. Right. You can get there. Right. You know, like, oh, that's so far. Okay. Well, that's how I know you're not really invested. Right. How you bad do you want cool, it? You think it's cool, but yeah. you're not invested. Now, um, if you don't have a car, okay. That's one thing. Right, like, yeah. I get it. It, <laughs> sure. It, times are rough. Mm-hmm. You might not, but we give you like Facebook, and you can look that up, and you can bookmark it. And go, that's I know where that place is. All yeah. Right? I, I, if you want to, there's yeah. always a way. Well, there's a will, there's a way. You know, and yep. then, so the other the other step to that is you you got to do the research. Now, thankfully, we're in the internet age where all you got to do is look around online. Mm-hmm. What's near me? True. And chances are you're going to find that place you go there. Even if it's not a fit, they might be able to tell you where there's another place. True. Look around where you live. Just drive around. Mm-hmm. Like, keep your eyes peeled. You're going to McDonald's. What's in that shop, Mimo? Oh, wow. I didn't realize they do that there. Cool. Let me go check that. Like, yeah. You know, look around. <laughs> there's you know? options. Um, Here's the other thing. You know, so um, there's this website, Sword Buyer's Guide. And there's always someone who's wanting to learn, you know, Japanese swordsmanship or whatever, and they're always, well, how do I get started by myself? And the first thing they do is look at a dojo. Look for a dojo. Look yep. for a dojo. Look for it. But there's a lot of people from all over the world. Go, oh, well, where do you live? Oh, you live here? Well, did you know there's a place 20 minutes from you? No, I didn't know that. Well, how well, hard you look? <laughs> here's their website. I don't know how current it is, but there's a phone number. Call them, you know? Yeah. And, and there's, there's, believe it or not, there's almost always something, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and now in certain places, maybe not as much as the other, you mm-hmm. know, and that's where you have to get into like doing more research yeah. and then asking yourself, what are you willing to sacrifice? Yeah. Like how, time. how bad do you want it? Yeah. You know, cause again, like I'm not trying to like put on airs. Like I'm some sort of like cool guy. Like I'm, I know people who've literally left their whole life behind to go do martial arts in Japan. I right. haven't done that. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and your wife but, thanks you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I thank her for putting up with me already. Right. So like, you know, but it's, like, I'm not doing her any favors. What I'm That's saying. Right, yeah. like, she's, she, there are days when she doesn't. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but no, it's like, so, but, you know, so I'm not like sacrificing an entire way of life here and, you know, giving up my job and my family and you right. know, whatever. I'm not like, but, but I am investing time. I can't get back right. on the road. It's important to know that it does cost. It costs it you costs a lot time. more than you think. Yeah. And it's not even time. It costs money. It costs, it does. It costs yeah, true. um, energy and effort. It, yeah. It, you know, and, and the other thing is like, you have to, you have to, again, what are you going to sacrifice? There's gonna be days you don't want to go. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I'm like, I don't want to go. Work sucked. Yeah. But. How bad do you want it? So, yeah, you, you got to ask yourself, you know, what is it you want and what is it you're willing to give? Yeah. And and you have to, you know, consider all these things. Now, everyone gets started for different reasons. Some yeah. people really, really want to learn self-defense. Okay. Well, here's the thing. If you want to learn self-defense, you know, it, try to say this in the most. <laughs> understanding way possible you know? mm-hmm. got these uh they're, they're really popular with like you know like moms and stuff these right like self-defense boot camps and stuff like that oh yeah yeah, yeah. Right. and here's the thing man you show up to this place and you all wear these like cool like you know custom-made tank tops and yoga pants for a day and get all sweaty and you know this guy shows you like a couple of things and you're oh yeah and you're, mm-hmm. but like that's not enough Right. It's, it's important to like, know like, and it, it the do, training. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if, you know, this dude who spends more time bench pressing than training is teaching you how to get out of a chokehold. Like, okay, first of all, did he actually choke you? Right. Did you get out of a chokehold or did you get out of him putting his hands n- near your, your carotid artery? Did you do that? Did you actually do that? Most mm. people aren't ready for the psychological factor of like, no, I'm actually going to choke you. When right. I, when, like, so when I, this has happened to me so many times, so I'm trying to explain like, how to get out of a chokehold. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, I'm helping people with it in, in like karate class or whatever. Like I'm not a teacher. So right. I, I'm not like teaching them, but like mm. 
I hate bad training. Ditto. <laughs> so when like I'm like, training and someone's like, oh, you know, the next the next technique you're gonna do is a chokehold, and they just like gingerly place their hands like, right. on my shoulders. <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm like, no, 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 like choke me. Get in here, yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay. And they like, they just like move their hands like two centimeters close. I'm like, no, no, like actually like choke me. And and then they finally like they put their hands on your neck, and I'm still like, no actually <laughs> like you're like my defense is gonna hurt you more than you're hurting me right now it's like i'm not trying to sound like i got a kink here it's right, yeah just, it's just like get after it you know like sure if i can still talk to you normally you're not choking me but not like that like, yeah that, that's not enough you know and yeah and so like here's the thing you know but but that takes uh, some form of like psychological conditioning sure you know, it's actual training. Yeah. Especially because yeah. if you're someone who's new to the whole thing, mm -hmm. you know, like you're, you're, you're some, you know, 120 pound, five foot, nothing housewife who's going to learn self-defense because you had a scary situation and you know what? Good for you. Yeah. Like take, as you should, like you said, everyone should be taking martial arts power for yourself Hell yeah. and, and gain your own agency. This is what I'm saying. Everyone should learn. Martial. Yeah. But again, you've got to, what are you willing to give? Sure. Are you willing to give up your comfort? That's a good you're point. not going to get good unless sure. you're willing to kind of throw yourself into the heat of it. The yeah. reason why you go to a place to train is that's the safety factor. Because like you yeah, can go out right. to the street and put you're yourself right. in dark alleys and wait for someone to attack you yeah. and try your luck. <laughs> sure. All right. As a complete rube. And right. maybe you'll get out. Maybe you won't. I mean, that's, that's yeah. uh, I wouldn't want those odds. So you go to a place where there's mm -hmm. the safety of this guy is going to teach you. And he's not going to do something horrible to you if you fail. Right. But you have to, if it's, if it's for self-defense, right. There's, there's so much more than just like a dude play choked me with like zero force. And I twisted his wrist and pretend kicked at him. And we all wore right. pink tank tops, including this big Jack dude. Like <laughs> that, that's actually a great point that I've never heard brought up. It's like, you're talking about the importance of actual training mm -hmm. and how taking a class is not training. That's well, like you, you have the idea, but the, the application is different. I would say that it's more dangerous to show up to one of those boot camps and walk out thinking you're the shit than acknowledging a, you don't know anything. That's a great point. Because if you think you know something, but you yeah. haven't been doing it, you are more likely – yeah. A little knowledge is dangerous, man. You are more likely oh, yeah. to not just avoid because you're going to be like, what do I have to worry about, man? That guy that was training me weighed 260 pounds of muscle and he had, you know, a foot and a half on me in height and I was able to do it. No, you weren't. Yeah. <laughs> no, you weren't. I, I guarantee right. you, you weren't because you couldn't do it to me right. the same way. I'm five foot nothing and I weigh 135 pounds on a good day. Right. All right. With my boots on. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, you, you don't. Sure. And, and again, that's not to be mean. That's not to discourage people. It's no, it's you, almost to encourage them to get actual training. Well, or to keep up with it. You can't yeah. just go one time or once a month or whatever, which is telling on myself saying, Oh, I go up there once. But here's the thing. I do that right. shit after work almost every day. Like, right. You're I'm still training on your own time. in the time. You know? Right. And again, I'm also, I'm a beginner at what I'm doing up there, but I've not a beginner in training. Right. Right. Yeah. I've been training half your life. Uh, yeah, yeah. Finally yeah. hit hey, that mark. <laughs> All right. But, um, no, so you have to, you have to kind of build up that mental callus and psychological callus. Yeah. And the only way you're going to do that is to be momentarily scared. And that's yeah. touching back on what I was talking about. I'm really glad like what happened in the early days of my training for me when like, you know, people that we all did karate with were hanging out where we weren't in the dojo. Right. Yeah. Where like the stuff that wasn't <laughs> cool happened where it's like, right. Oh, Josh isn't paying attention. Attack him. And really like, beat the shit out of him and no you got to fight for your life i'm not going to just take oh i give up as an answer right like that's a scary thing when like sure like you know he's not going to kill you you know nothing yeah. <laughs> horrible is going to happen right it's just really gonna hurt sure and sure. you have to make that choice oh this guy's actually like like he didn't put gloves on he's bare knuckle punching at my face yeah yeah, yeah. he doesn't believe in tap out like, yeah. like i know him he's <laughs> he's just he's like that and that's like that's not how i would train people obviously right. but yeah. like that's kind of like the inoculation I got, you know, it was right. Oh, I have to do something. This guy is going to keep, and he knew what he was doing. He did that right. on purpose. Yeah. You know, part of it is he just like, you know, beat me up. But like the other part was like, he knew what he was doing. Right. It wasn't what 
should have happened. Right. But I, he did get his result. But, but, but that goes back to also what you were saying that like, be honest with yourself, mm -hmm. you know, like not realizing like, oh, I took, I took a class on Tuesday. Now I'm a badass walking down the street. You have yeah. to be honest with yourself because yeah. it's, it's so physical. Mm -hmm. It's your body doing these things. Yep. Like that's something that like I've been working on a lot with class, it's specifically the last class uh, since he's got me working on like mind stuff now. Cause he's like, I see you're so dedicated to training, but you need to empty. And I was like, oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Because every week I'll, you'll point out something. You'll be like, try this. I'll spend the whole week working on that. And mm. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. So then the next week I'll do it, and it's a different part I'm getting critiqued. I was like, all right, cool, cool, cool. All right, I'm building this up. But now it's the mind part where he's like, you're, I see the dedication, but you need to just do it. Don't yeah. think about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I know. I, I'm sorry. I'm working, I'm working on it. I'm a solo writer. I'm working on it. But it's, it's that coming to terms with yourself to get the most out of it. You know, I yeah. get it. You uh, need to get a book. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The The Unfettered Mind by Takwan Soho. Okay, I'm down. I've I've mentioned him once or twice already here. Yeah. He's uh he's an old school Zen monk, um, and he's awesome. Mm -hmm. And yeah, where do you put your mind? Yeah. All right. And I, I'm not trying to be deep or cool or like I know things. Like I am a student. But too. still, yeah. But that's that's the question. Yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, so you have to, you have to learn to not disconnect, not get rid of it, but like, right. uh, you get in all these like weird paradoxical things and it's, right. it's like, you're never like, I can't say never. Some people just have it. Like they're just walking right. Zen, whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you get these like weird brief moments of like clarity that for some reason you just can't put in the words, even though you know all the words that you would describe it. Right. It's just the the experience isn't going to mean the same second hand yeah, as totally. it meant when it made it self stick totally. in your brain you know and so that's why I'm saying I oh, just listen to this book it's really good and whoever's listening you should also listen to this book because it'll help you be honest with yourself but Sweet. anyways um no so you know with martial arts like yeah you, you gotta you gotta be really really honest because you're talking about if you're trying to learn self defense mm -hmm. stuff. You gotta sure. be honest with it, and and this is the other thing we have to like use discretion of where you're going. Yeah, you know, like what we talked about earlier. Like you know, if you're going to a place where we do competition, you know, WKF karate or whatever it is. Or, yeah. You know, WTF karate? I don't. Yeah. I don't know what the, the <laughs> and it's fine for what they do. Sure. It's fine for what they do, but that's not where you're going to learn how to deal with stuff. Like what we talked about earlier, situational awareness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where are you going? What are you doing? Yeah. You know, when are you going? Why are you doing, you know, you know, and again, like I, I, I realize that that gets really close to what people would say. Well, you're, why do they have to, well, because people suck ass. You need to be aware. Like, yeah, it's never your fault if someone attacks you. Yeah. I mean, unless you're the one that attacks them and they yeah. fight back, then <laughs> it's right, your yeah. fault. <laughs> but if you're just minding your own business, you sure. know, and someone accosts you, it's not your fault. Right. That person made a very immoral choice. Right. And that's the end of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. However, again, it's, it's being honest. Mm -hmm. We live in an imperfect world. Yep. I would like to think that the majority of us are good. And the numbers actually show that the, ma the majority of us are at least making morally decent situations most of the right. time. Because if every one of us were just like survival of the fittest animals, this place would yeah. suck way worse. Yeah. All right. Let's just For be sure. honest with that. For um, sure. But. You know, you got to be aware. Yeah. People who are predatory mm -hmm. look for people who look like prey. Sure. That's that's just reality. Sure. All right. Here's the thing. That means they're looking at your body language. They're looking at how you carry yourself, how you move, oh, what that's a you're good point. doing. Sure. All right. This this has nothing to do with like, well, she was wearing a shirt. No, that's like a horrible thing right. to say. Don't say it. All right. right? But I, they're, they're I give paying you mean, attention though. To how you're conducting yourself, and right. if you look like someone that you know they could swindle out of their money or they could kidnap, sure, whatever. It's like like pickpockets, counterfeiters, yeah, and all those they're, things. They're paying attention to the yeah. guy that's just not paying attention to where his wallet's at or whatever. Sure. Right? Okay. So I see what you're saying. And I realize it came dangerously close to like making a, a statement I'm not making. Right. I see what you're saying though. I yeah. and I see where that can like some people can start to think you're saying something else. And that's not what I'm saying no. at all. It's one of those things that like correct me if I'm wrong. Martial arts at the very least can give you the confidence to walk through life with some sort of agency where you're not like that's a benefit from it. Well, yeah, yes and no. Yes mm -hmm. and no because no one's bulletproof, right? Of course. Of course. 
what martial arts gives you if you're doing it right mm-hmm. is the ability to almost see where to not walk sure all right sure. it's not that you go well i've been doing this so i can go down that dark ass alley and no matter what happens right no no you're not you're not a demigod you're not you know neither is the guy attacking you they're not a god either sure. you're human with mm-hmm. the same weaknesses but they might be on pcp that's uh, especially they in florida pain the same way. <laughs> or, yeah or god knows what they're on in florida you now, know? But, you know. yeah but what it's what it's helped me is that Again, what I was saying earlier, like the mm-hmm. uh of the oh shit, the that first uh is like when you're realizing, right? Right. So um this was this is actually funny. I had I had been at school in Miami for a while. It was my first time going to a club. I went to club space with a bunch of my friends. Mm-hmm. And I had never been to a club before, so it was all new to me. Now at the time I just had my wisdom teeth out and it was like this horrific process oh, where like it wasn't just like a you know one two three pop wham bam thank you ma'am here's your Viking and get out kid it was sure. like my teeth grew in sideways and the roots grew like fish hooks into oh, my jawbone no. so they had to like cut into my jawbone yeah to get my wisdom teeth out you just got lucky well yeah it was uh, <laughs> I I won the horrible dental experience lottery my whole life and this was like the creme de la creme I'm with so you. the guy gave me Tylenol for that <laughs> and club sounds like a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like I messed I, I, I messed up my stitches because the only thing I would see was hot hot like drinks and yeah, stuff. Totally. Not cold, cold hurt more. So yeah. you know, so I then scorched my wounds. All my stitches came out. So they had to restitch me up because they kept bleeding. Ah. And finally I'm like, Can you give me something good? Yeah, right. You know? <laughs> and and the guy was like treat me like I was like some, you know, pill popping like, you know, junkie. Which of okay. Florida. Doing the due diligence, Florida. Yeah. Anyway. But like I was like, Look what you did to my mouth. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. I'm yeah. not like, I stubbed my toe. Right. Give me some crack. I'm you like, did this. I have, now give me some crack. <laughs> yeah. So he, he gave me he gave me pain, some, some painkillers. And they, sure. It's like, I think it was Viking. So it's not like the like that hardcore, like you're right. like, you know, fucking like yellow submarine. Like, sure. Yeah. But like, let's just say, let's say what it was. Like, you know, it was taking the pain away, mm-hmm. but I'm sure my reaction time was still dulled. Sure. A little bit. Yeah. Like it was working enough where I wasn't in excruciating pain. I could still function. And that's a lot. But like my that's altered. senses were dulled. Yeah. yeah. So I'm at this club, never been in before, and and I'm not liking it. You know, because mm-hmm. like I'm seeing how people act in these situations, mm-hmm. and it's not how I am. You know? Right. I'm seeing people where it's like, listen, man, you see you see a pretty girl. Okay, I get it. But like, yeah. But how do you conduct? Like, who cares? Yes, you. you congratulations, you saw a pretty girl. Right. Don't act like a. Don't be a dick. Yeah. Yeah. Like my my <laughs> mantra, man. Don't be a creep. Yeah. Just don't be a creep. That's it's, you it's get good mantra. so much in life, and I'm. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just sitting down, and you can smoke in this club, so I'm smoking a cigarette, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, man, I'm ready to go home, and I see this big fucking dude just leering at me, right? Oh boy. Like, Always a good sign. A well, and the, the best <laughs> thing about it too was the dentist told me. After he's like, hey, just saying, man, don't get like punched in the face for like <laughs> two years. And I'm like, what? He's That's like, good advice, he's like, regardless. I cut parts of your jaw out. Ah. It's got to heal. It's not strong. Fair. Don't get punched in the face. That's fair. It's fair. You know? And so I'm sitting here at the seat and I'm having a cigarette and I'm looking up and this guy's leering at me. I'm like, maybe if I ignore him, all of my problems will go away. Here's yeah. a life lesson. Your problems <laughs> don't go ignore, go away when you ignore them. No, right? I've learned that the hard way several times. <laughs> yeah. So this one actually worked out all right. Okay. okay. Um, and so, you know, I sitting there and my friend, my friend who's my dorm mate actually had a bunch of his, his his friends from Orlando down. So it was mm-hmm. like three guys, three girls. Sure. So it was like the three of us and then his three female friends that came down to hang out, right? Mm. And so we're all in a group or whatever. And he's like, hey, man, we're heading out. I'm like, oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Something. This, this place is loud. It's noisy. It smells bad. I don't know what's happening over there. Um, right. You know, which that's a lot. If I'm like, I don't know what that is. Like I've seen. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know. And I was like, get up. You know, we're all walking. And he lets my entire group walk past him. Okay. All right. And I've had no interactions with this guy except oh God. him staring at me oh no. with this like murder face on. Oh no. And again, this guy's big. He's taller than me. He pro- he outweighs me a lot, you know. And I'm just like I just want to go home, man. <laughs> just want to go home. Sure. You know. And as I'm walking, he just he takes his swing at me. What? Like this full on swing, you know. Sheesh. And here's the thing. He was blocking the door. And all of my friends were that way. Uh huh. And the sober one got out first to find the car. So the rest of Naturally. my group 
is drunk. Oh, no. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. And they're over there. And perfect. So Conditions are perfect. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is where the training comes in. Not saying, I will fight you because I have trained. It's like, I saw what was going to happen before it happened. Right. And it's like, I'm not a psychic. I'm not cool. It's just, right. when you had big scary dudes trying to punch you in the face for like five years of your life. Yeah. You kind of get inoculated to it. Like, I'm not saying I would like, just like, yes, please throw punches at me. Like, I don't want that to happen, obviously. Right. But like, it's not, it wasn't novel. Right. Right. It wasn't new. I've seen this before. Sure. And I managed to like, just kind of side, like, like angularly step past him while ducking his punch because his height worked against him. Get I it. was smaller, just went right behind you. Sure. And I kept walking. Right. Get it. Now you would think like for most people, that's like, yeah, I'm going to fuck this dude up. He took a swing. I give sure. him so much. Shit. And like my brain actually played through like, yeah, fucking break his knees. I'm like, yeah. no, <laughs> man, I just want to go home. And that's how like the bouncer kicks my ass because who's who, like True. some dude who is fine, sands the broken leg. And yeah. then the guy who's like, yeah. Combat boot. Like, yeah. You know, so I, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to keep going, man. Like, There's that being honest with yourself again. Because again, yeah. my, uh, my, my, my senses were a little bit dulled, but I was still thinking, I'm like, ah, oh, like this guy is clearly going to realize like maybe I shouldn't try to fight this guy. Right. He just walked through my punch. Like it didn't happen. Yeah. Maybe I should just let him go. Maybe I shouldn't do anything. Well, again, when you ignore your problems, they're still there. Oh no. <laughs> so he was like, Hey, Hey. And I'm like, ah, just keep walking. So now I'm like looking over my shoulder, which you're going to learn this soon. Always look. This is important. Yeah. And you'll find out when you get there. Right? I bet. So always bet. look. So I'm like, I'm like looking over my shoulder right? uh -huh. and I'm not like turning. He doesn't like I'm using uh, for all of you, you know, people out there, you know, your awareness. And, and there's a term. It's it's not a one to one translation, but it's closer to a zanshin. You're using awareness of your surroundings. So I knew where this guy was at and I knew what the distance was, mm -hmm. you know, and I also he's walking like a big freaking lummox so i can hear him coming in a club so that tells you how hard yeah. this stuff. and and so i'm i'm like looking and i can see when he's winding up so every time he punched i just took like a half step forward and it just kept missing me oh there you go and he's getting pissed and i'm just i'm kind of like doing like like um well you've seen like kendo training and stuff like that shuffle step forward yeah yeah i'm like doing that just away from him and it worked sure. a few times and and finally he like he he got all wound up and he just did like a lunging punch and he punched me in the back of the head. Yeesh. And it hurts. I don't know if it was the booze. I don't know if it was me like stepping out of most of his range. I don't know what it was. It didn't hurt. It was probably also the Vicodin. Oh, there you but go. it did not. Hurt. Like I started <laughs> laughing. Sure. I started, I started laughing. Sure. Because it didn't hurt. And I turned around and I'm looking at him and I'm laughing about this and I see him. He's like, you know, getting even angry now. Cause it's like this little, I bet. it's this little like gothy looking kid with eyeliner on. Cause you know, that's what I was back in the of day. Course. And you know, he's laughing at me and I'm like, but you just, you're like six foot something and you outweigh yeah. me and you, just, you <laughs> like Superman this shit. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you like. That's I what should you got? be on yeah. the floor, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and, and now the next benefit of martial arts when it teaches you self control is it gives you a really good way to go, right? Yeah, and change your facial features. So when I was laughing at him and then did that, literally like, yeah, and went to the bouncer and was like, that guy just punched me in the back of the head. I don't know what he did wrong. I don't know what I, like he just boom. He, he he's he's been attacking me and I'm trying to leave and he won't let me. Keep, and this big bouncer <laughs> looked at me like he he. He turned and then like looked down. It was like a freaking comic yeah. like, cartoon. <laughs> like he, like I tap him on the shoulder and sure. he like turns like he's expecting to see someone at eye level and then he looks down. So that gives you the size. Like he had to physically look down. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like pointing up at this guy <laughs> who's like puffing up and getting all angry and he's red in the face because you know this this pop collar d bag doesn't realize like that's the guy who his living right is to mess you up mm -hmm. when you're making a scene. Yeah, yeah. And and so. The bouncer like nods to me and I see him. He goes towards the guy and then you see it dawn on him oh, no. <laughs> what's about to happen. Sure. And this bouncer like grabs a dude and punches him, throws him on the ground and like shit kicks him in the ribs Sheesh. and then starts dragging him out. And then this is where I know the meds kicked in because I had been reading the Book of Five Rings oh, and I've been reading nice. about, you know, anecdotes about been Musashi. There. Yep. And I was just like, and behold, I have defeated you with no sword. Yeah, and right. I, I ran out the door, <laughs> which... Fighting without fighting. You know, verbally kicked him when he was down. I feel like a jerk about You're it. Right, yeah. You know, <laughs> but anyway, so so moral of the story is it, it, it can give you the ability to recognize the clear warning signs of danger. All right? Sure. Where hopefully in the future you can just avoid the drunk douchebag trying to punch you in the face. Right. 
you know, and if you can't, at least avoid getting hurt. Because the best thing to do when someone's attacking you is get away if you can. Yeah. Because here's the thing. It's true. You might know a whole lot. Mm -hmm. You have no guarantee that they don't know anything. True. All right. So True. that's the thing. Like you can you can try to square up, and what happens when you find out you've been really learning how to punch real good, and yeah. that guy's been learning how to take down punchers his whole life. Yeah. And he's just having a bad time. Yeah. In life, and now he's resorting to you're gonna get triangle choked out, and then he's gonna rob you. Like mm -hmm. you don't know. It's true. You know. And now with with the, how how prevalent it is. Everyone yeah. knows something. Yeah. You know, I mean, back in the day, it was like, I watched Dragon Ball Z and played Street Fighter. You don't know how to fight. Yeah. Or, you know. It's true. It's, you know, it's, it's knowing yourself, knowing where you're at. Yeah. And then knowing reality, you know. I respect that, though. I think that's a great answer because it's not like you didn't give me like a poster answer of like, just do this for fitness, whatever. You're like, no, here's the realities of what it is. And here's to get the most out of it. You have to be honest with yourself. You know, like yeah, well, it. I think I think that's important to have that realistic sort of point of view. I, I think that's important in all walks of life. I think so too. Is is what what are you you know again the the, the first one is be honest with yourself no matter yeah. what what situation is and I'm not just talking about martial arts I'm not I'm talking about everything be honest with yourself because that's you can lie to yourself yeah and you can get real good at lying to yourself and then one day you wake up and like you've lost so much time yeah and being honest with yourself is uncomfortable because Absolutely. being honest is usually when you're drawing up the stuff you don't want to think about being honest mm -hmm. is when you admit you have a problem absolutely or or that you don't know and and that's something i think a lot of people are afraid to do and i don't think it's like oh well, it's new everyone's afraid to admit they're wrong no i think people have always been afraid to admit they're wrong yeah here's the thing man you have to yeah you know? you'll never grow and the other the other the other thing is after a while and again this is going to sound hypocritical because i'm doing multiple martial arts across the board but you commit yeah all right, because you could be the guy that just bounces around from dojo to dojo to dojo. I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Eventually, in your life, you have to make a decision that this is what you do. This is who you are. Mm -hmm. With the knowledge, you might be wrong. Yeah. yeah. And what you do is, if you discover you are wrong, amend. Yeah. But you have to commit to action to realize you're wrong. Yeah. If you if you spent if you spend your whole time flailing about wondering, well, you'll never get anywhere. You won't even get the knowledge that you were wrong, which yeah. is the first step to realizing <laughs> that you you're you're on the right track now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So like let's say, you know, you're a guy and like the closest thing to you, because it's like two seconds walk away from where you live is a, a Brazilian jiu jitsu place. Mm -hmm. You know? All yeah. right. Then commit for a little bit. Yeah. Do do your jujitsu, you know? And and don't quit when it gets hard. It absolutely get hard. Those guys train rough, man. Yeah. They, like I I respect them for the training. Even oh, if yeah. it's not something I do. It's they're they're pretty badass, you know. Yeah. So you okay, commit. Commit when you're out of breath. Commit when you have the stitch in your side. Commit mm -hmm. when you're all bruised up. You know, commit when like the sweaty armpits on you. Like commit through that. Right. But if you realize that it's not what you were looking for, that commit a little longer. Yeah, and just to maybe, be sure, maybe it's good. Mm -hmm. And if it, then try something else, but you have to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, again, there's no there's no certainties, there's no guarantees in life. Yeah, and so you make informed decisions whenever you can. You know, listen to your gut too. Like you know, if you yeah. get a bad feeling, you know, I have a bad feeling about that dark parking garage. Well, uh, yeah, it's either there's a guy <laughs> waiting to mug you, or like there's a monster. You know, right. I mean, Equally plausible. Science hasn't proven. Like, you know, just but, saying. Oh, yeah. It's a good thing no, we didn't get into ghost stories. Today. Right. I, no, I think I think that's important. I think that's great advice. And as somebody who I have looked up to for so long, as a martial artist, it's cool to kind of get and to... need better role models. Listen, <laughs> like you said, it's what's around you. You know, I didn't really have a choice here. Oh, okay. Well, well I'm sorry that I'm you know? not a, a better role model that's right. for, for I, the people. I will say this, that it's actually been really cool to get to talk to you because we haven't actually ever talked not really no like, yeah i mean we've known each other for a while but like life yeah happened so there's like a like, kind of like a split in the paths for a little bit yeah well, actually because i remember you you messaged me a while back i did i did and i well i gave you the the this standard a, format when you oh, asked we're that in fort myers man yep yep you know and and you didn't show up for a while i guess i didn't want to do it yeah like yep. and it was nothing personal it's quite simply like it, that that was your first test yep Yep. Like, yeah, I could just be like, I'll train with you, but like, you're not going to get the same thing. You exactly. Know? And that's the thing. Like, a lot you're of right. people want right. to train on their own. They want to learn that on their own. Yeah. 
Not really, man. It's true. Like I can tell you right away who's learned from a book or who's learned from someone. Even oh, I bet. someone bad. I bet. Because there's weird little hiccups. Like you know, you mm-hmm. can gain insight from books and videos. Yeah. You can get information. You can even get ideas. Yeah. All right. But you can't learn a style. Nope, I agree. Because there's so many nuance. Again, nuance. There's mm-hmm. so many nuanced things that you cannot explain with video or dialogue or you know words on paper and pictures Agreed. alone. Agreed. So I'm not. I don't discourage people from you know. Hey, what? Yeah, watch watch some videos. You know, when, mm-hmm. when you get to a certain point, you know, watch watch what other people do. Yeah. You should be watching yourself too. The, uh, the technology age, man. You got a smartphone. Videotape yourself. Yeah. Videotape yourself. Learn from it. Pick yourself apart. Mm-hmm. That's one of the reasons I do that with with social media. Is well, first of all, it's because I'm kind of fishing for like-minded people, which because it's worked for me in the past. Absolutely. I've met amazing people in Japan. I've met cool martial artists. You know, or or you know, potential future things. You know. Yeah. So you gotta. Kind of put yourself out there, but you get to choose on social media what you're going to be representative, mm-hmm. all right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, the other thing is I, I watch – I save a bunch of the videos of me, me training, and I watch them, and I watch them, I watch them. Mm-hmm. And, like, um, the, the videos of me cutting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I watch those things like a psychopath. Sure. Being like, oh, man, that's where I would have killed that guy. Like, I'm not yeah. looking at it. It's like, that's Josh. I'm like, that's where I would have killed that guy. And they go, oh, wait, that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I suck. I better get better at this because apparently I got holes all over my technique. Sure. I got to fix that. And right. So it's, it's, it's a very useful tool that I think that we really need to capitalize on. Yeah. You know, technology definitely has a place in advancing the martial arts. Sure. Uh, I'm excited, though, to see, like – with technology and seeing how you use it and stuff and like using it as a training tool it's like watching sports tape yeah you know well, it's I, the same thing it makes total sense to me uh, every every professional fighter whether you're an mma guy a boxer whatever you watch videos of your guy yeah that that's new yeah all right that's really new yeah uh especially when techniques were always kept secret that's you true had no idea what this guy was gonna do yeah you're, you're getting ready to fight this guy even if it's like in a sport thing before be like and, and maybe maybe you were in the crowd Right. Watching, you know, maybe you were on a battlefield and you saw him do, but, but like for the longest time, you didn't have this on your side. Yeah. You know, and you didn't have this on your side. Do you watch you watch yourself? Sure. You know, and sure you go down that black hole when you watch, you watch yourself, watch, you watch yourself, but do it. You know, people use mirrors, but now you have to get used to a mirror image. Yeah, that's true. You take the video. It's it's you. It's exactly the same. Yeah. That's a good point. That's awesome it's, it's almost cool. a waste to not use technology in your training these days it's it's absolutely yeah i, I really think it is um so don't get too caught up in the, the, the gadgets and gizmos sure because the only thing that's going to make you better is yourself absolutely and like you shouldn't use it as a crutch like what i mean by that is you have to learn to feel the inconsistencies in yourself without seeing yeah. them yeah so you can watch a video and go ah that's where it happened all right put your phone down Right. Do it. How do you physically fix it? And, yeah. But if you know at least what the visual thing is or when it's happening, now you pay attention to your body. Right. And you do it. And then you, you go, okay, it felt like that. I'll do it like this. This felt a little bit better. And you videotape yourself again mm-hmm. after you've done it a few times. You go, has this improved or gotten worse? So you can use it as like a check, you know? Right. Now, the, the, the best thing to do is obviously you should get the feedback from your sensei totally or, or senior students or your instructor or coach or whoever you know whatever you're doing in life right you get, you get feedback from people who are better than you mm-hmm. to become better yeah and you know in some places it's not a taboo to you know hey like, i'm not gonna like share this but can i have a video of you doing this form or you know whatever and you have to really know the situation you're in like right. some, some instructors will look at you like you have six heads and some of them will encourage it you know because yeah. they see it as hunger you know right um and then pay attention to the people who are better than you. Yeah. How are they walking? How do they stand? How are they carrying themselves? Mm-hmm. How do they go through doors? What are they doing? Yeah. How do they, when they, when they write at the beginning of the class, how are they doing that? What's their body doing? Pay attention. Like really like, yeah, just like almost be a creep. Yeah. yeah. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like all, almost like, like you yeah. find the line where it's like a restraining order or you're learning martial arts. That's from right. Like, you know, like you that's know, right. I don't want to be a weirdo, but, yeah. <laughs> but no, like watch them like, when you can. Yeah. You know, sometimes you don't have to ask the questions. Yeah. Sometimes you can get the answers by just watching. Yeah, for you sure. Know? Uh, that's a very important part of training actually is, is training your eyes while yeah. you're watching, you know, yeah. so if you're injured, you show up to class, you watch. Yeah. You know, you train what you can mm-hmm. and then you watch, you know, yeah. I've done that before. Um, you know, it's important. Sure. You know, 
because there's so many ways to get better, but the only real way to get better is by doing it. Yeah. And training. I agree. So I it's, agree. It's really important. But yeah, so the moral of this story is do martial arts, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this is this is actually one of the things that I've, I've always said. The martial arts are for everyone, but not everyone is for the martial arts. Oh, and okay. It's it's not to be mean or exclusionary or anything like that. It's just that some people will not want to make the changes sure to be not even good 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 is subjective and good doesn't really matter sure some people won't want to sacrifice what they need to yeah to get something out of it yeah you know and you can't go into it expecting i'm gonna get this i'm gonna get that like right y- you'll get out of the martial arts what you're supposed to get 100 percent. I, I think that's why it's cool that martial arts exists and it's cool the benefits that people yep. get from it and mm-hmm. the just the idea like it's almost like everyone should do martial arts for the obvious benefits, right? Yeah. And then the not obvious. But also there's this other thing, everyone should do martial arts just to see that maybe you're made of more than you think you are. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And absolutely. that just is just pays dividends and dividends. Yeah, it really does. And the other thing is you do it for what you said mm-hmm. and also learn that and you also realize like violence is like you know, I'll even say the joke like violence is always the answer. Ha! Ah, blood makes the grass grow. You know, but yeah. like no, not really. I don't. I don't like violence. I agree. It's, it's really weird. I love swordsmanship. Yeah. I love learning sword techniques. I love learning how to be good at it. I love yeah. going through the motions, and I love, you know, uh, training mm-hmm. in the way I would want to use it. Yeah. You know, training efficiently. Absolutely. You know, it, it, uh, again, learning I, I've the been, art. Yeah. I've been, yeah. I've been quoting Misashi all night, but, you know, sure. he's, he's just the man. But, like, you know, tr- uh, you, you should train in the way you would fight. Absolutely. You know, that's paraphrased, but that's that's the gist of it. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you think that's how you would fight, well, you better put it to the test. You know, it's mm. um, going into, like, pressure testing or what we talked about earlier, like, getting mentally, you know, uh, put in these stressful yeah. situations you know in in your training and you have to you have to gradually work up to it right but you have to if mm-hmm. you expect to be able to use it right because if a guy jumps you from behind in a dark alley, i don't care if you're a man or a woman or whatever if you're mm. not somewhat ready to deal with that type of stress or a stressor of that kind sure because your body treats stress the same way totally and you go up oh, fight or flight mm-hmm. and it's the same thing with like pressure te- uh pressure testing techniques mm-hmm. and i've seen a lot of people with a lot of different ideals on on um pressure testing and i i want to get my opinion on record because you know hell yeah i'm not saying it to their face so yeah. you know, they won't <laughs> try to start a pissing that's right. with me online that's right but um i've had people say well you know no pressure testing there's you don't know blah 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 mm-hmm. and then other people say well these techniques are historically tested obviously because from they're back from the day when people were doing this on the battlefield so we clearly know they work because they're unchanged throughout history and it's like hey man mm-hmm. no one's asking if that technique works they're yeah. asking if you work yeah that's true you can't say that you're a master of something and that you understand it yeah if you haven't done it to some sort of degree that denotes realism yeah. No, I'm not saying, you know, go find a dude, throw him a sharp sword, have him attack you, and then murder someone. Right, yeah. <laughs> but this comes down to, like, you know, the, the, the technology and the training tools and right. stuff like that. Like, you know, the, the intent. There has to be intent. There has to be intent in the strike. There has to be intent in the de- defense and everything. Mm-hmm. And that's I'm – I'm a big fan of pressure testing stuff and a lot of – Yeah. There, there's some dojos that don't do that. Sure. There's some styles that don't want to do it. There's some karate schools that don't want to do that. Mm. And honestly, I feel like they're they're selling you a bill of goods, but you're not getting much out of it. You know? Yeah. And that might piss people off, but that's just my opinion, and it doesn't matter. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm gonna like die in another 40 years. Yeah. And no one's gonna remember I said it unless they find this podcast on an internet archive. That's so, right. You know, well, I mean, that's why people do competition to begin with, right? It's a test. Well, you would think so, but then then what happens is so, so many of the rules get changed that there's no way to actually test it. That's so you're true. just it, all that does is it shows that you're good in a controlled environment. Here's the thing: your dojo is a controlled environment. Yeah, that is true. Now, I will say the stress of a competition can be useful because it's psychologically mm-hmm. taxing. It's psychologically stressful. You know, there's people watching, and and so there is a place for competition. Right. But be honest. Yeah. That's like the the moral of my story with martial arts: be honest with what you're doing. Yeah. And what you want to do. And that's and commit. Yeah, and commit. Be and well. That's being honest. Yeah. You can't say you're committing if you're not. Yeah. You're being honest. <laughs> that's true. You know. And again, it's one of the virtues of Bushido. Like, yeah, that's right. But that's, it's the truth. It's there. It's you know, and wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom is important because you know, it's what you need. 
I agree. It is what you need. I agree. Uh, I can literally talk to you for days. Oh, yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I was uh, I was glad you said yes. I wasn't sure cuz you know, you never know. Again, I was I was kind of like I don't think I'm that cool. And yeah. I still don't. <laughs> I really don't. Like, That's no why I'm here. No, well, I mean, you know, but <laughs> you know? I, like, I'm just out here. I'm just a guy. It's like I told you. you yeah. Know, everything I do, anyone can. Yeah. I don't, I don't do anything special. Like, I'm just out here doing my own thing, you know. And, mm-hmm. you know, like what you talked about earlier is you know, taking risks and just doing stuff. And, like, I've done a lot of things. Like, you, you've seen uh, making sword handles and everything and yeah. stuff like that. I risk ridicule. Yeah. Because I, I ask questions. From people who either know way, way more than me or mm-hmm. just are like, you weren't actually in Japan trained by this guy who's been doing it. So you don't know what you're doing. Of course. And that's stupid. And like, so you risk the ridicule. Sure. And you just put yourself out there and you take the criticisms and you take the shit talking and you go, okay. But again, what are you going to do about it? That's right. Like, keep on they going. Can't, like, here's the thing. They can't stop me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's they, true. They can't do that. That's true. You know, and that's like, you know, so... Yeah, like, you know, you can get ridiculed online and people, will, you know, say, oh, well, this guy's an asshole. And it's like, you know what? But but I, it's not like I'm selling my work. It's not like I'm yeah. trying to pass it off as, like, you know, traditionally made restoration right. museum quality. You're I'm learning. Like, I'm a poor ass dude who yeah. <laughs> can't always pay someone to do this. And if I learn how to do it, I never have to pay any of you again. It's a good point. Like, it's a good point. Unless I want to because I like your work, you know. But same time i put myself out there yeah and i've met a lot of cool people i love that putting yourself out there like that was uh i will say one of the big reasons how i came to be what you know yeah. this how how i started training Ido was because you're putting yourself out there so thank you for that well i mean you're the one you that know. made the choice i did i, I did i again I, i'm just out here man. i made the choice and you showed me the option so i'm yeah, thankful for that go. well that's that's the least you can do yeah you know? it's, uh, because everyone's everyone's doing their own thing everyone's trying to find something yeah and again man, this is what i was saying the, the very like the very first thing is empathy yeah man there's not enough of it in the world Agreed. there needs to be a lot more agree and do, like, i'm sorry i i honestly think that if you're a martial artist and you're a serious martial artist and you've been training for any period of time i think if you don't develop compassion and empathy for the world around you as a martial artist because you realize like it teaches you how fragile you are like some people just like get a big old pair of brass yeah. balls and think like oh man i'm like apex predator it's like for maybe a few more years until you get old. Right. And then someone's coming for you. Yeah. Like, but you have to understand, man, you're not on top. Right. First of all, you never are. There's someone better than you. And there's Always. someone better than that guy. Always. And and it's like a weird circle where you mm-hmm. might be better than this guy, but this guy might be better than you, but this guy could kill him. Yeah. Because everyone's different. Exactly. You know? And you never know. And that's why yeah. you have to have an open mind and a flexible mind. Yeah. And keep learning. Mm-hmm. Keep learning. You know, one of, one of my dreams is to you know, uh, build a private dojo, you Mm -hmm. know, whenever I have some property sure, and have once in a while, open it up where people from other sword schools, and I don't care where you're from sure, and what you do, you send me some advance notice and you can come and we can compare technique and train together, you know, or, you know, this is the safety equipment I have. This is what I'll fight you with. Mm -hmm. If you want to come and just, and the same, not like a dick measuring contest. I don't care about sure. who's better. It's like a sharing of knowledge. If you want to learn about yourself by fighting someone you've never fought before, show up. Sure. Like, like kind of like Kendo, but like, you know, I, I plan to get like a HEMA kit. Sure. And, and they, there's a couple of, um, facsimiles of a Katana that are made with the same technology where you can use these against HEMA guys. Oh, okay. You know, and it's, it, the shape is off. It's mm-hmm. not a great representation, but it's the best they can make. Sure. It's it's not um, wholly true to the geometry of the okay. Katana, but it will work enough. Mm-hmm. And I'll learn a lot. Yeah. You know, and because I've I've done that. My buddy, uh, my buddy Ryan does Hema, and I blunted down a sword, and he brought his like toughest sword, and we didn't fight, we didn't spar, but we just we just kind of toss techniques at each other. Yeah, just yeah. See where like where what's at, and you know, and it was it was really educational. Yeah. You know, just to compare it. And I don't think there's enough of that. I mean, I agree. It, it, there, there needs to be a bit more. I think you need to still have your eye on the prize with your own training. Mm-hmm. But there has to be, I think, gr- greater interplay. Yeah, I agree. In, in the martial arts. Because here's the thing. Unless you're only doing self-defense training, and that's the only reason you do it. If you're doing it to learn. Yeah. But you're also doing it to be a badass. But here's the thing. It, secrecy doesn't matter as much anymore. 
True. You know, unless you're trying to market yourself as some shadow secretive thing and there's a yeah. ninja dojo down the road for you, okay? Yeah, yeah. But, like, the, the secrecy doesn't matter the way it used to. Right. Because your life, your your clan's life, does no longer depends on absolute secrecy of hidden techniques. Right. But I'm also not saying give everything away for free. Sure. But you don't. You don't have to have this tight fist on like right. interacting with other swords people, like other swordsmen, and other swordswomen and stuff. Like they're all over the world, yeah, and they're all doing different things. Mm -hmm. And you're losing an opportunity to understand yourself and technique better mm -hmm. by not interacting. Yeah, and again, it's the same thing with technology. It's it's stupid. Yeah, it, it ought to be done. It's the same thing. Like, I. I would love to be able to do the same thing with like karate and jujitsu and judo and just like, yeah, just come here and hang out and like, let's just learn, like not fight each other, but like learn from each other. Yeah. Like, like, Hey man, you're a judo guy or a jujitsu guy. I'm more of a karate guy, which there's grappling and karate. Yeah. He yeah. was at 11. Right. Uh, but you know, jujitsu is pretty much, only good. Like, mm -hmm. do you want to like, you know, develop like a relationship and be like, Hey, do you want to just have someone try to hit you a lot? Yeah. And use your jujitsu against it. Right. It's going to help me get better at beating a grappler. But you're going to learn how to, like, fight a striker. Sure. Or, you know, hey, this is my buddy who does judo. Shake hands. Be cool. He's yeah. going to just throw your ass a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Or, right. or, like, I would love the same thing with a boxer. Like, yeah, put your gloves on, man. Let's, like, go at it. I want to see how I, like, how I can get around boxing, you know? Yeah. Like, we should all be trying to better each other. I agree. Because it's, it's no longer survival contingent. Right. You know? And it's the same thing with every aspect of life, actually. I think so, there's too. There's not resource scarcity, at least in the majority of the world. And there's also no reason for resource scarcity anywhere in the world anymore. Sure. And just knowledge. Like, it's important to share yeah. knowledge. Well, you know? it's how you further things along. I think so. It, it's really how you make everything better. That's I would true. like to see that. I think you are definitely one of the people that could make that sort of happen, even in our little bubble. I'm excited to watch it. I get totally blackballed if I try to bring it to the world. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> no, okay. Man, we'll make our own world, Josh. <laughs> that's how this will work. <laughs> this is starting to sound like a real cheesy guy anime. That's plot. right. That's what we'll do. So one of us will be the protagonist. You'll be like the really cool teacher that shows up, and then all of a sudden takes your shirt off for some reason, and I'm like, guys, you don't understand. That's our plan. <laughs> I mean, I've already got like like a couple of the anime tropes. I've got like a Boom. lot of scruff. I smoke cigarettes and I've got long hair. That's what so, I'm saying. We're there. You know. I'll just develop a somehow higher voice and then more insecurities than I already have. Well, Boom. current anime trends, you have to take like a foot minimum off your height. They're Done. all short now, man. Done. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do this for you. <laughs> How are you going to do that? I'll, you, I'll figure it out. We talked about committing. All right. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> got a hacksaw. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Listen, don't test my will. No. But, <laughs> You but dude, feet. this this was so fun. I was so glad that you decided to hang out and talk with me. But before I let you go, I have to ask where can people find you online and see your cool stuff that I may be obsessed with. I don't know. We'll see. <sighs> okay. <laughs> uh, so the only uh, social media I have worth following is on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's yeah. fantastic. It's, it's I'm a big fan of it. It's an average Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so uh what are those little lines? Are those underscores? Those are underscores. Okay. I don't I don't know things. I could uh, be wrong. Yeah. So <laughs> it's uh Tosa underscore no underscore Kaiden. Love and, it. And uh that's that's my Instagram. Kay. And uh if you if you find me, you're gonna see a lot of different stuff. It's mostly martial arts related and project related and when my wife consents to me putting a picture of her online, it's wife appreciation posts. Beautiful. It, yeah, I do a lot of stuff. I also have a link to my secondary account, which is just the project related work. So that's where I post pictures of what I do on my job, or uh, I mentioned I make sword handles and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, that's 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 me. So uh, yeah, it's spelt pretty much the way it sounds. Um, for all of you people who don't know anything about Japanese, Kaiden is spelt K A I D E N. That's it beautiful so but that's me i love it i yeah, love it well, thanks for having me of course um, i'm gonna throw in like a shameless plug for please do else. please um, do when you feel like interviewing an even cooler person who's slightly crazier interesting you gotta oh get dan. dan yeah <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not even, i knew the like, second listen, we made eyes <laughs> listen like we could have like between you and i like we could have like a series of talks between us about life and cool things that have happened because like 
I, I didn't even scratch the surface yeah, of no, the this, martial arts part. That's how this like, works. Like, you I just mean, have to come back now. Or maybe. That's how it works. That's, uh, well, if you, <laughs> I don't know. You might start getting hate mail. That's from right, yeah. That guy sucked. <laughs> but um, but no, no. That would have happened forever ago if it was going <laughs> to. Uh, well, you know, I'm you know, the host, just Josh. Just me in general. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but no, no. Dan, Dan is someone you should consider. I'd love to. He's all about taking moves and taking risks and stuff. Yeah. And I'm not going to like go into it because that's his story to tell. Sure. But he is a real cool dude. And he's also like my best friend. So of yeah, course I'm just going to promote great. him. Yeah. Dan's awesome. But um, he's, he's someone to keep your eye on because he's, he's doing a lot. And again, like I've already mentioned him multiple times throughout my life. He's been a huge, a huge influence on me in my training. Oh, hell yeah. And so if you respect my training, which I do, then he's someone that, you should naturally want to, even if it's not on the podcast, but like someone sure. you should want to interact with. Hell yeah. Because he played a role in who I am today. He was a direct uh, shaper of my mentality towards the martial arts. Oh, so, perfect. Yeah, he's, he's someone to keep your eye on. I love it. So Dan, if you're listening, you have to come on now because Josh said so. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. He's also kind of contrary, so he might be like, "I'm not fucking doing anything." Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, no. I think he, I think he would enjoy it too. Um, Done. But, I mean. Done. You will get all kinds of. You want to talk about interesting? That guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's awesome. I'm in. But anyways, no. I'm thank in. you for thank you for having me. This was a, a very new experience. Yeah. I, I, I actually I really enjoyed it. I was nervous. I still don't think I'm interesting enough to be on the show. But hey, you uh, you fed my I think ego. So, and let and me talk I'm about myself for. <laughs> I love it. Hit, hit the mark. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. Of course. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. I've also got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Bernice, Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.